Welcome to Shakespeare, the podcast that bridges the gap between you and all things Shakespeare. I'm Chloe Baldwin. I'm Paul Stafford, and today we are going to break down the night, the 2010 film that is directed by Julie Taymor and starring Helen Mirren in the production of The Tempest. Yes, that was a lot of information. Good job. It was. It yeah, was. you did it. I, yeah, I'm proud of you. I don't want to do it again, so <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we're sticking with this one. Exactly, I like it. Um, yeah, uh, it's. Uh, it, it, there's a, it, this was interesting. Ooh, I'm just happy it was less than two hours. I know, me too. It really was. It, it just, it was, I mean, what, I don't know if it's just my sensibilities, but man, just, I still can't nice. get over the four the hour. four hour, hour kind of, <laughs> it, that was at least two hours too long. I mean, I, 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 I'm starting to hate that, not hate, I'm starting to want to make fun of that intermission in the middle less and less. Like, right, right. But it, maybe it's just two movies. I don't know. Anyway, it was definitely a more palatable time frame to watch a movie and I don't know a, We'll get into whether <laughs> the storytelling yeah, I, is 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 good or not, or like or. I, I have a theory. I have a, I've been thinking about this a lot, and yeah. I, I have a theory about what I about my analysis of this production. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, uh, I also want to add uh, just a slight note. This is another the second movie we're doing, but we do plan to do a lot of live, live theater productions too. Yeah, and I think they'll offer a good contrast to just like those two mediums. Absolutely. But uh, you know, it's uh, March of 2020, and we are in the midst of the coronavirus yeah. outbreak, and so, so we're so hiding inside. And we're trying to be yeah, productive and, and and stay positive yeah, and all exactly. that stuff. So that's that's just a little bit of context as to why the these episodes and probably the next few will be. Movies. <laughs> yeah, and so that's something for us and for you as our audience to look forward to. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> when we can get out of here! <laughs> <laughs> get out! Get out! Um, but I, I kind of wanted to give a little context of like what our experience and what my experience is with The Tempest. Um, so I think the first time I saw The Tempest on stage was at Chicago Shakespeare Theater here in town. Very big Chicago theater if yes. you're not in Chicago. We love them! Um, and it was the... Pe- the uh, Teller, the not Penn and Teller. Oh, Penn and Penn Posner and Teller. Oh, so it yeah, was. But Teller but from one, Penn and Teller. Exactly. Yeah. So it was the one with like all the magic in it, and our friend Adam was in it, but I didn't know him at the time, which is also funny. But it was that was really cool. I especially enjoyed seeing Larry Ando, who Paul knows I freaking love. Locally famous Chicago Shakespeare. Actor. He's Chicago famous, and he's just a bucket of laughs. Mm-hmm. I love that man. Um, but he uh, he played Prospero, and it was he was just freaking amazing and I I oh I, he was Prospero yeah I it was it. like I know right it, it was like I think that was the first maybe the first time I saw him on stage or like second but it was like the first time I saw him playing a lead role and I was just like you're the coolest I nice. want to be you when I grow up <laughs> um so that's one thing and then the other thing was and I don't know if I've told you about this but when I was in college <laughs> I was in a. I'm sorry. It just it says so. It's it's no. I know you very well. I know. So, so it's just funny for imagining you as a kid, saying, <laughs> "My role model is this old funny man." <laughs> I'm like, that's so Chloe. It's so true. No, especially when I was younger too. My other role model was Joel Gray. Do you know him? <laughs> no. He plays the old guy in Anything Goes. <laughs> the one who goes friendship, friendship, just the perfect like, I friendship. I want to be that. I really do. <laughs> Like him plus Sutton Foster, if I could just shove them together. Hilarious. It makes all the sense in the world. Thank you. I'm sorry, continue. I just want to be an old man. What can I say? <laughs> um, but so when I was in college, I was in a production that was uh, a young audiences adaptation, so like for kids, um, production of The Tempest called Prospero's Storm that was a musical. And I played a lot of like supporting characters, uh, including. Uh, having a bunch of puppets. So I, it was like my first time working with all these different puppets and some of them were big and some of them were small. And it was really cool to like see how this story connected to kids. Man, honestly, that sounds like the ideal version it, of it that. It was fascinating. And it was like, and I was thinking about you too, like as I was connecting like the version that we just watched with that because Prospero's Storm was like just a super broad strokes version of this story, which mm-hmm. to connect it with kids and to like, and it, I liked it because it wasn't condescending, but yeah. it still like was like, Painting with bold strokes. Uh, yeah, and I think giving it like the puppet aspect already like Puppets. lets me like let go of certain realism aspects that yeah. they're trying to like you know like the story is actually dramatic and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I don't want to get too deep into this, but I mean I read a lot of sci-fi and fantasy, and I have a lot of problem with how like magic is depicted mm. in in, fi- in fiction. And I, I, don't, I don't know how interesting it will be for me to like go on a rant about this. I think bottom line I, I though, think what it's, you always I think, say I think is it has like a the really... scaling of magic. Uh, there's a lot of things I want to go into. I put words in my mouth, Claire. But I, I think there, I, I think it has a lot to do. I, th- I think it's an important point to make and to realize. But I mean, 
that's just for me, and I get because I've seen, I've met and talked to just as many people who don't have any of those problems with magic. Like, and I think they're crazy, but <laughs> <laughs> they're wrong. But I mean, I've met they're them. They're definitely wrong. They're insane. But uh, it, 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 without certain, like you know, systems or like explanations of how we're supposed to perceive mm-hmm. that magic and how much power that person has, it does, I think. Take, especially when you use that element to build a story on it and like people are supposed to interact with that person knowing these things and like their history is now like something you have to take into account without explaining that or just like giving them whatever powers they you want at the time I feel like totally it it makes it harder for me to connect to the story yeah. and like you know feel the stakes of what's going to happen I think that's totally Somehow true how Harry Potter did it I don't know how they did it I don't know how did she did they? it to me she did it I, I never I, I think she did it, it I usually it have those questions but like, because you know, they didn't like to explain, like, you know, like, like for example, certain ma- oh, God, I'm here. I am, here I go. <laughs> diving I right in. I was like, as soon as you said that, you're like, should I dive in? I was I'm, like, we're diving in, we're doing it. I'm not gonna dive in too far, but Paul, I just mean, do you like systems? I would keep talking around it, so I'm just gonna at least just, yeah, like, do it. like, put it in a bubble real quick. But, like, just like for example, certain systems of magic will just, well, they'll explain yeah. that magic is just like a transfer of energy and it takes energy to do it and you yeah. have to get it from somewhere. Cool. Now I have like an idea of like how powerful this person is or isn't, and you know, like because you know, like they'll make choices where like at the first thing she's like from mile away, Prospera is like they're sinking a ship and like doing all this stuff, and I'm like, okay, but then does doesn't use it later, and then like how often do you use it, or like she has another like fairy who seemingly does way more impressive shit than that the whole movie, and then like that's your slave somehow, like they just say stuff and I'm supposed to accept it, and cool, but I mean like. It's it's just so messy to me, and I, I can't I can't categorize it in the way that I understand things. And that's maybe I'm so stupid, funny. but no, that's you're just... you're not stupid. I feel like we we've covered this on the podcast already. Paul anyway. is not stupid. <laughs> Fun fact. Um, also, Paul, do you like systems? Do you enjoy them? Shut up. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll, we, we'll I get think back we should totally get into the the magic rules of this world. Uh, and I think if there's any time to bring up like magic systems, this is the time to do it. This is the most. Hold my arm, Chloe. Most... Okay, so we'll get magic- into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the most magical Shakespeare play, I think. Um, maybe. this and like make. Beth, but that one's dark and twisty. So, yeah. Um, Midsummer. Midsummer is also very magical. I know Shakespeare. You know Shakespeare. <laughs> oh, you okay. forgot about Midsummer. Okay, so I also want to ask you. I'm, I'm not sure like if we should like do like these three questions at the top of every episode or anything, but well, do I, right I, I kind of yeah. want to give it a little bit more context before we jump into this long. <laughs> next totally. Thing. Um, so not this movie specifically, but. This play, what like, what do you what does it mean to you, and what do you think we should take away from it? Um, or like, why do you think it's why do you think it's relevant? Honestly, I'd rather answer this question at the end. All I right. think. Yeah. Right. Can, can, can we circle? Uh, can we circle uh, back? Can we circle uh, back? Uh, uh, yeah. Right. Are we gonna get into the summary kind of part of it? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I'm going to sum up as best I can this movie as it was given to me because yeah. again, I have not read the original play. Mm-hmm. And I have seen some productions of this, so I do have a little bit of context of, of maybe what characters did what in other times. But for the most part, it's hitting me fresh as an outsider and a layman. So. Yeah. Uh, I'll ping stuff if I'm like, so here hey, I go. just put that in the movie. That's some stuff I think in the movie just like happened, and I had a real hard time remembering it yeah. because it didn't like connect for me. It yeah. was just like this and this and this, and I felt like I was taking a test trying to like recall the totally. order of things. You're talking about them like handing you stuff and not being able to say Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Holding so many metaphorical cups of story. <laughs> cups of story. I gotta, put, I gotta put one down. They're hot. Oh, they're hot. Too hot. All right. So, the first part of this story, it just it uh it opens up on Felicity Jones. Felicity Jones is just like barefoot in a dress, <laughs> and she's like, you know, no, no. It opens up on the ship. Sorry. No, it starts on Felicity Jones. Oh, no, okay. And then we go to the ship. Yeah. See, yeah. exactly. I remember stuff. Well, you yeah. go. And so she's uh she's just. You know, she's a young, like, 18-ish-year-old girl. She's, like, mm-hmm. in a dress, barefoot, like, just on an island, just walking. And we're just like, oh, this is interesting. And then it cuts to a ship, and a ship is just, you know, you know, getting... Uh, it's a bunch of, like, people yelling Shakespearean speak, and I'm not following it, but it's, like, clearly... Did you not follow any of it? No, not none of it. I, and it. I was looking over at Chloe, and she was just, like, completely, like, enthralled, and just like, I love that line, I love that line. I know, but I did, did I say, though, that they're coming across clearly? Because they weren't. Oh no! I didn't. Like I love the lines. I just wish I wish they come. I mean, I felt like I got all I needed. It was just people are stressed on a ship because the ship is like people are getting thrown overboard like violently. There's a a good joke in there though, which is like so they're they're talking and the one the one guy is like, so so 
the, the all the royal people like come up upstairs to talk to the sailors and they're like sailors don't you realize that there are fancy people on the ship don't you know who's on the ship it's the <laughs> king and the sailor that's on the main deck is like go back downstairs and he's like but don't you realize who you have aboard and he's like, like dude Titanic. literally there is no one on this ship that I love more than I love myself and want myself not to die so go Wait, the fuck so back downstairs and let us do our jobs the sailor so the, uh... so the, the guys are coming up to be like you guys should to do your job better and make sure the ship doesn't crash Whoa. so that the king doesn't like die and he's like dude do you think i i want to die yeah like that, i'm not I, like i'm not gonna just do my job better like yeah. for the king yeah, like i don't want to die yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, I imagine it's, like, it's like the titanic is is sinking and then one of the rich people is just like can you can you, you make know? it not sink? yeah Shut the fuck up. Go downstairs and let <laughs> Get us on do the our lifeboat, jobs. You yeah. dick. Exactly. <laughs> or listen to the band play as we go down, but I'm not listening to you. <laughs> I don't have time for this. Yeah, exactly. So, that's very funny. I think it's funny. I, uh, I think that's a, it actually gives like different context. So, like if 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 the opening scene of something, like usually that's like again, like a precursor to other things, and I don't think I, I don't imagine Shakespeare was ignorant of that. Mm-hmm. So like I don't know, maybe the that might offer some context to like what we should focus on in yeah. the play. Yeah, totally. I feel like it, so it, it both. But I, since I missed that, like I, I was just no, kind of totally. trying to take it all in. I, I feel like it's a good way to set up both. Like it's it sets up the exposition of like this is a king on board a ship, and they're like you've got the king, and then you got the sailors, and yeah. you got all the little court people. But also, that wasn't obvious because like one, it was just like super tight shots from far away of people in like the heaviest of heavy movie rain. Mm-hmm. So it was all ADR and the ADR wasn't really mixed that much louder than the rain. No. So people were just yelling at the top of their lungs these words in order. There's no inflection, there's no like again, I'm sure that is how you'd say it if you were in a storm or people were were falling overboard, but I don't think it like I couldn't You got to pop it out a little I, more. I, I I rely on that inflection when I'm listening re, uh watching Shakespeare. Because, like, it, that gives me the, like, how I'm supposed to take these lines. Right. So it was just like, yeah, yeah, Shakespeare speak, Shakespeare speak. And it was like, oh, Shakespeare speak, da, da, da. And yeah, they're, 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 just they're getting, giving like, us nothing else. By stuff. We're, not, we're not, like, really seeing their faces, so we're not, like, getting a lot from I could that. Tell. It was dark. You know, it's like, you know. it, and, <laughs> and so I was more laughing <laughs> that it was, again, the heaviest of heavy movie rain, and everything was on fire. Right, <laughs> like, and it's like, we could, so we could totally get the idea, like, what we got out of that scene, what it sounds like you got, is, like, chaos, rain, Everyone's that's what's happening yeah. the, like it's bad but if that was the if that was all we needed we could have gotten that from Miranda's speech that she then goes to give to Prospero yeah. where she's like there's a ship and it's in a storm and it's drowning like we 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 gain more information from that scene so we need to hit that info and and he gave it to an, us in an entertaining way in, yeah. in that joke of like, well, I'm not gonna try and save you any more than I'm gonna try and save myself. So like, it, it behooves Inter- me to do to my job. <laughs> well, it would be entertaining to you too if they made it like clear. Yeah. Because when I explained I, it to you just I, now, you laughed. I, I, I bet you, I did laugh. It was good. See, uh, it's funny. <laughs> Well, like, it's funny. funny like, <laughs> if I had a Chloe to explain it all to me, it's funny. Or if they did it clearly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like if I would have done that, I probably would have like done a shot like of them trying like before they go into the storm, and he's like. You're around that storm, like, and he's oh, like, "Oh, look out for that storm!" Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm trying. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I feel like that'd be great. And then like cut to like the chaos or something. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so we just we're saying that we're the best movie makers ever, and and I feel to... like what we're actually saying though is like, uh, in in this instance, I'm not defending this production, but I am defending the play. Do you know what I mean? Fair, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's a that's that's a good distinction. That's totally. what we're trying to do. Yeah. Is, is dissect those things. Anyway, so, so uh, maybe also, we'll get, eventually we'll get out of scene one. Right, right. One, <laughs> one, thing, one thing we should ping to is that uh, Felicity Jones is playing a character named Miranda. So when I said Miranda a second ago, that's who Felicity Jones is. Got it. this character named Miranda. She's a young woman. At this moment, that's all we know. Yeah, She's a young know. woman, and she has really good running form, and she's, and she's barefoot. <laughs> okay, Paul loves good running form. Every time we're, we're watching a movie and someone's running, he's either like, oh, no, 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 they can't run. <laughs> or he's like, that running form. And so I think I think that was one of the, the highlights in the movie for you, wasn't it? It was. It was great. Yeah. She had great running for her. It. Proud of her. <laughs> um, one of my favorite, uh, just before we move on from the first scene, <laughs> um, one of my favorite productions that I've ever seen of, of The Tempest was um, uh, a, like just last year at a small storefront theater here in Chicago where they, it, it, like as the opening of this show, they had kind of a movement <gasps> montage. You remember that? Oh, we were there. I was there with you. Yeah, you were there. I, 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 I forgot it until now. I know. It, and it, it was, was like amazing. music. It was set to music. It was the, set to music. Uh, did somebody in the, in the cast write it or something? 
uh, it the, was great the music. music. Yeah. I think I think someone who associated with the production wrote the music. <sighs> yeah, music. yeah. So it just was imagine like... a great song and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and great movement though, because it was like it was really good storytelling. Like I got that they were on a ship. I got that it was sinking. I like I even got like here are the royals and here are the sailors. Yeah. And, and all that was really well set up. I yeah. Thought. No. I, and I with no words. Sp- speaking of that too, of like getting across things with like because like I gave, the, right after that scene. I think I think even before that scene, what was the other exposition after the? Was it before the ship scene? I think it might have been first. The first. I can't scene. remember because sometimes people switch it back. And but anyway, forth. but like we were talking about, just telling like if you're seeing a theater play and then them like telling, giving you the exposition and stuff through just movement and yeah. like in visuals. Because we great. talked about that with Hamlet. Yeah, exactly, and just being able to just give a, a huge swath of like, okay, this is the world you're in. This yeah. is the tone of the play. This is the characters that are in it, and like. I, I I am not again not a dance expert. I am a, <laughs> I am a, I am just a layman. I imagine there's people who like, because I just know there's people who like use their their entire life has been studying. Oh, this absolutely, stuff. And, yeah. like, and they're so deep into it that for me to just be like that's crap is just kind of disrespectful. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. No, but something about like interpretive dance, I just I don't quite get it. And on yeah. its on its own, I think it's is really hard to it's not get as effective into. for you. But I've I've seen interpretive dance in plays. Yeah. And it's like my favorite thing. It's like yeah. I think it's like it's like it's like a very potent ingredient. Like turmeric doesn't do much if you just eat it by itself. But like it does <laughs> a great thing if you just add like a pinch that. of it to to your meal. That's a great analogy. And so uh, the, what, and that's what we saw in there. Like it was like, imagine the song was more like that s- sail by like like, and that was yeah. like the um like the the, the the ship and like the thunder and like they and all all the actors would like react as it was happening. Yeah, and, like, they it was would, awesome. And they'd sway together like as if they were on a boat. It was so wonderful to just be yeah. like. That made me, it, it brought me there on Absolutely. a on a super low budget production. Yeah, and so yeah, and I guess. Yeah, I guess I'm saying just like there's, there's, I don't think low budget is like necessarily at a disadvantage, like imagination wise. I, yeah. I love the things people do. Creative. I think so too, and that also and, and that much to say too that like you know we we had all those words in the version in the movie version we just saw, but they weren't really giving us anything. But we had a lot of movement in the storefront version we saw, and that gave us a lot. It's so more. funny how what what gets across and what yeah doesn't. yeah, and I think I think you know either way it's just about clear storytelling. So if if it's the words you got to make the words pop. Yeah, and if it's movement you got to. I guess make the movement make pop. Make it pop. Make it pop. Pop that. B- pop <laughs> that. <laughs> is, is, have we decided? Is this a family show? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we talked, we talk, we said a lot of things about last episode, but I, I don't think it's a family show anymore. It's a good point. Oh, man. Just, okay, so what happened next, Okay, scene two. <laughs> okay. Oh, also, I want to say one more thing. <laughs> Julie Tamar is the director of Across the Universe and The Lion King on Broadway. That's so funny, and like it makes if if you ever if you decide to watch this movie, it makes so much sense because I feel like so many scenes are just begging to be across the universe. Absolutely, how they're edited, how they're cut, and like the song that they decided to put in there. I was like, oh my god, that was like her. her I'm glad it's like all all these productions before were just practicing so she could make that wonderful movie. It's so true. I, I do feel like the jury's those, out. Everybody ever those, likes Across the Universe. So yeah, oh absolutely. <laughs> So I, I feel like some of those moments really worked in this, and some of them Agreed. didn't weren't as effective. But I, we yeah. can get to those for yeah. sure. And, it, and again, it is hard to make a movie. It is hard to make a movie. I have no idea what the conditions were. So I, I think I have some ideas, and I'm that's the, part I'm, of my theory. I'm judging it for theory. me, but also I get it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, scene two. Scene two. Uh, Julie, um, I'll just call her by her name, uh, not Felicity Jones, but Miranda. It's yeah. like, you know, she's running and she, oh, we just see her running. We don't know why. We see the ship that's, you know, in the in the storm, people getting thrown off and everything's on fire. So they're just like double fucked. Yeah. And it was funny too. You're like, why is everything on fire? Yeah. And we found out later. Yeah, exactly. It's double fucked. And then they, she runs and then she runs and she, and she gets. <laughs> double, f- hashtag double fucked. <laughs> and she gets to Helen Mirren. Yes. And, and we have this super like a dramatic shot of her in a wizard's robe and a staff. And then it, it connects us with the scene in the ship, and we find out that she somehow has magic powers and is is the one just double fucking that ship. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, she must be super mad at that. Yeah, them. I thought and that then, was that moment was really effective because you you immediately went, oh, she's doing that to the ship. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I thought like, Chloe gets really excited when I understand just like the basics of what's going on in Shakespeare. No, and and not not because I'm like good job, Paul, but because I'm like because I'm like oh that moment was effective. Ping, like yeah. I can write that down for later and for sure, you know, d- use that myself. Or, and so like, and we get and we get our first instance yeah. instance of character development right totally. here, where where uh, Miranda is like, why are you doing that? You clearly don't know. 
who's on that ship, and we also reveal that like Miranda is like grew up on this island alone, and just and, and only the only only knew one person, which is Helen Mirren, which we find out is Prospera, who's usually a man named Prospero, or Larry Ando, or Larry Ando. <laughs> <laughs> so Prospera Helen Mirren is uh, she's like chill out girl like I, I messed up their ship for my own purposes but no one's hurt mm-hmm. and, and so and she just kind of like oh well okay <laughs> <laughs> that's not exactly how it goes but I'm moving on uh, okay so then, she, and then oh yeah then um, uh, Helen Mirren Prospera decides to like give now to give her giving the audience all the backstory now and she's like it's time to, for me to tell you your past and she's like I know we've been like here since you were a, a child but this is ha- what happened and so it, it proceeds to go to this uh, montage of like her being royalty and not royalty but like a, a duke I think or a duchess or something like yeah. that and uh, there's like a lot of soldiers marching in the night and there was a lot of words that I had a really hard time following. Yeah, I think I think part of that too was because they they and and this is something I can speak to because I know the original text. Um, they changed some of the circumstances of that story to fit the fact that she was a woman. I got, that makes sense. And and I think that also made the language a little clunkier. Mm-hmm. So that might have also made made part of it hard to understand. Like plus we're seeing this montage and a lot of things are happening, so we're not really seeing her face and we're yeah. not seeing her tell the story. So that might have made it a little harder too. Yeah. But so the original story, or I'll tell you what happened in this version of the story. So in this version, she's married to the Duke. And when her husband dies, then she's more vulnerable to her brother taking over because, you know, she doesn't have a husband, so she doesn't have as much, like, claim to the duchess throne. That's, is that a, know, still a throne? I guess, sure. The, the, the nice chair. chair. The really <laughs> nice chair. Um, so she doesn't have as much claim because she's a woman. <laughs> a woman. Um, and also... <laughs> Uh, and also you having the, fun, <laughs> having so much fun. Um, and also, she so y- you know that part in the montage where she's like playing with chemicals and stuff in those little jars. Mm-hmm. So that's her like learning about um, sorcery and magic and all that, which is obviously she's a powerful sorceress now. Um, oh, that so, was important because I didn't get that. I'm like, right. if she has all this fucking power. Why is why is she like so easily exilable? If she right. can like so destroy a ship, from she's so far been developing away. exactly, exactly. Uh, I guess I know. And so she. So part of the reason that they were also able to exile her was that they were like, oh, you're a witch. You're, like, working with all these evil spells. So, like, you have dark magic. Ha. Like, get out of here. And and they even they even emphasized in this version, like, because I'm a woman and, like, other pe- others of – something like others of my sex have been burned for that same thing. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was kind of nice. I, like, I, I liked I that parallel. That. Yeah, I thought I, that, was, I, that was a cool – I heard and understood that line. <laughs> hey, I love it. Um, they did I, – I remember them, like, slowing and emphasizing that part, which mm-hmm. I thought was really, was really good, especially because it was a change. Um, yeah, no, I, I liked, I like the concept of if we're making her a woman that also has more implications about people not liking her doing magic, because that's definitely a historical thing that we yeah. can, we can ping. The, for sure. It, like, it, like, it shifted that little piece into alignment with like a, like a bigger through line. Yeah. Like a sure. historical for, th- for, through for, line, for, which for I thought ro- was cool. For the story. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so I liked that aspect of it, but I thought some of the other language changes, um, made things a little clunky sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd be interested to find a way to smooth that out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so moving on. Um, so then she tells him, you're, you're, we're, you know, I was a duchess or whatever, and uh, uh, you were my daughter, mm-hmm. and, you know, uh, we got exiled together. And so now that that's what's... And so the, in the, in the uh, exposition, the girl was probably like five years old. She just doesn't remember. And she's, yeah. That, that, so now she that's all three. Miranda's memory. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so... Uh, and then, so now we also meet Ariel, mm-hmm. which is a magical entity, a sprite of some kind. Yeah, a spirit. Yeah, a they spirit. Call it that just, like, spirit a lot. That is yeah. also like, uh, it's so. There's also there's a lot of like slave talk about slavery and like you know ownership of people and land uh-huh. that this movie like really like I think turns the dial up in a couple things. Uh, totally, but, which is, in, like, in a couple it, different ways. Yeah, so. We meet Ariel, and then Ariel was like, oh, we, we find out that Ariel was the one that, like, you know, set the, all the ship on fire and do all this stuff. And also Ariel was the one who made sure that no one actually died or got hurt. Right. And so now, uh, so yeah, the people are coming to shore, and then we find out that, you know, uh, Prospera, God, bear with me trying to remember all these names. But, like, you got it. we find out that, that Prospera was, you know... It, she there, she has a very this this ship is very important. It's not just a random yeah, ship. Yeah, right. Within her telling the story to Miranda, she's like, eh. she hasn't said why though. Right. 
And then we also meet Caliban. Yes. And so Caliban is played by by uh, Jaimon Honsu, mm-hmm. which was in he's from he's, he's in Guardians of the Galaxy, he's in Blood Captain Diamond, Marvel, yeah. yeah. And he's uh, so good. And so before I'd only seen Caliban played by like a monster kind of character. Yeah. Or like a toad character. He's literally like a toad yeah. puppet. But but uh, Jaimon is just like himself with like some body paint and looks like he's been to old Valyria and has like grayscale. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Absolutely. But like and they call him slave and they call him monster. They don't even call him by his name. And, it and this is, is Prospera and Miranda. This is Prospera and yeah. Miranda. There's, there's like pr- conceivably our protagonists. Yeah. And they call him slave and monster. And like he talks about how, you know, my my mom owned the island and you took the island from me. I'm like, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. Right. Because like they're basically just like outlining what, how black people or like how African countries have been treated by European countries and Britain specifically for ever. Right. And, uh, and it's just like, uh, and he's just so like subservient and cowering and it's just like, it's super uncomfortable. And I get that that was definitely the, the aim of what they were trying to portray. But yeah, it was cringy every time I saw it and I just, I didn't know how to deal with it. But like, yeah, yeah totally. he was just like, <laughs> he, so yeah, he's in Caliban is just this character who, I don't know what his purpose is here, but he just, he's, yeah, he's very subservient, subservient and cowering in front of um, Prospera, but he doesn't, he doesn't want to be her slave but i guess yeah. he has to for some reason it's not really clear why it, it, in this version or well in, in general in the text it's because so basically she can cause him pain through her magic so like he literally like she's like i will give you cramps like you will feel cramps yeah if you don't do yeah i don't i don't do. think prospera is necessarily a good person she's like totally yeah just does things to people because uh-huh. she doesn't like it yeah and she's like whatever totally <laughs> yeah you you're you're all over it at least my, yeah. I, I agree with you I, I don't know if that's what everyone would say but i, I it agree makes with me you. feel I, good when i say something and you're like yeah yeah that's it i'm like yes god no it's true <laughs> I, I think that i i think we're on the same page with that i i also think that so i think we and we can talk about caliban more as we go on but yeah. i think over overall in this production, I thought it was really interesting to me how they set up, like, I was like, oh, this is going to have to do a lot to do with colonialism and, like, you yeah. know, race relations and all of this. Yeah. And then it didn't really pay off. It really did Like, at all. And, and I think that if there's, there were aspects of the text, and again, we'll come back to this because this is my <laughs> overarching theory, but there are aspects of the text that they cut that yeah, I think that would have been they're, super important. They're really good at help. Yeah, help, <laughs> helped us, like, you know, I, it, and I, bet, I bet you there was a producer somewhere that was just like, oh, two hours and ten minutes? Not happening. It's got to be 150 Which tops. I also am kind of like, yeah, you know, exactly. I don't want to like, turn like, into Like, how do we congeal these yeah. things and, like, make them, fit them in a smaller box? I, yeah. I get it. Movie totally. making's hard. It's hard. It's but hard. But also... Holy shit, that didn't pay off at all. <laughs> no, it really didn't. And I, I think that there's a way to to make it, in, at the very least, like, you know, and I don't think there's really a, I don't know. It, we, we, can t- we should talk about this when we get to the end. All right, we so now we've introduced a few more characters. We've introduced Prospero, which is the uh-huh. wizard, who, who found out was been exiled. Mm-hmm. Miranda, which is her daughter. Mm-hmm. And we have the sprite, which is, which is Ariel, which uh-huh. is a slave to Prospero. And we have uh-huh. Caliban, who was apparently one of the original, like, you know, owners or just occupiers of this land that Prospero showed up and just stole. So yes. that's that's who we got so far. The, the other uh, expositionary aspect of that scene um, with Caliban is that they say, and in some of productions this is cut and some it's not, it kind of depends on how you want to frame Caliban, how you want to frame Prospero, blah, blah, blah. But in one produ- in and it, it and it's also, like, hearsay of, like, what really did happen between these two. But, um... Uh, it, it just depends on like what you want to decide is real about the world. But in the text, and they included this in this version, I noticed uh, one of the things that Prospero and Miranda say is like, "We were super nice to you. Like you were our friend. We were BFFs. We all lived together. And then you tried to rape Miranda. Oh. And then and so, and then we that's, sent you that's away. A, that's pretty huge. Which is really important. Yeah. So it's and they kind of skimmed over it in this. They did. Or, or like what, at what least they, what they emphasize did, it enough. What they did say. Yeah. They said they said like, oh, we we gave you like you know m- magic and we taught you to speak, mm-hmm. which. I imagine is just like a very weird way. I, I imagine that's how a lot of colonials would see it. We taught you from speaking your ridiculous language to our language. Right. And we gave you like, you know, the, the benefits of like certain, maybe an invention that like, that, yeah. that Europe had that Africa didn't have. And they would imagine. You're welcome. And, and, and you're supposed to be so forever grateful that right. that we are occupying your land now. Exactly. And that's what I got from that. Yeah. So I was like. Yeah. And I think, I, so if you, if you end up cutting the thing about, 
about like the sexual assault between the the, yeah. the sexual assault that Caliban does, then it's it's about that and it's about straight up colonialism. I mean, or or you could also <laughs> so there's just so many ways you can play go, it. You yeah. could also play it of like you know uh, Miranda and Caliban like maybe were about to have a thing and then they yeah. got caught by Prospera and so, then Miranda's like no, nah, but then Miranda's a jerk. Like who, you know what what's the yeah this this truth is how there? this is how um oh my god ambiguous text alone can be. Yes. And and also, but in that way, some ways it's good because now you're free to adapt it to whatever time you go. It's exactly. like the Bible or something. <laughs> like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> uh, you're free to adapt it to whatever, you know, you or need to do. Or the Declaration of Independence. Or, or, <laughs> so you can like play it however you want. So put yeah. in the theater toolkit, I would Yeah, yeah. totally. So uh, I like that. Uh, yeah. But I also so anyway, don't just, like that it's not clear to me with, with the production no, they decided and I, on. and I think that when you do put it in, it needs to be really emphasized. Because then that's the most important thing of, like, yeah. like, no, you literally sexually assaulted my dog. Like, yeah. you tried to... Uh, Wait, but I don't know. Like, I, I would rather just, like, again, this this happens all the time with all these productions I see. There's, like, so much story to go around. Like, focus on one thing. Right. And, like, just get me there. Because I can't hold all these things together. It's a lot. Now, it's like, a lot to hold. I, I, I appreciate complexity, but, like, I feel like... Like, mm-hmm. sometimes it's like, why? Sometimes you have a complex point to make, yeah. but you still have the point. Right. And I feel like this was You gotta doing get that. there. You yeah. gotta get there, yeah. Anyway, so in, in this production, I feel like it's definitely leaning towards the, like, look, guys, this is what colonialism looks like. <laughs> kind right, of like I think so, too. And idea. I think if that's what they were going for, they probably could have cut the, the sexual assault. Yeah. And I think that would have made more sense. Oh, they didn't cut the sexual assault no, line? No, it's just in there. It. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, exactly. And they did, it wasn't really emphasized. It was just like, and you did that. <laughs> and no. by the way, this big right, thing. Right, right. <laughs> okay. And so now after that, we, uh, we find uh, the, the people that were on the ship start washing up on shore. And the first person that washes up is um, a young male. And he's beautiful. And and uh, Miranda Miranda is just like what? <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 and she loses it, and she's like, "I'm in love, I'm in love. I don't care what anybody says. This is the first man I'm meeting, and I don't need no other men, because this is the one." And that's basically how it goes. And he's also like, "Me too." What she said. Yeah. And uh, and Prospera sees this, and like any parent watching her, you know, adolescent child just like swoon over the opposite sex like oh crap what do I do about this and she's just like you know given the dude the third degree and then she like says to herself what I'm paraphrasing as oh fuck I can't make this too easy for them to fall in love otherwise it'll like not be worth much it's like yeah yeah, Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I gotta make it hard for them to fall in love and yeah, something about like the prize can't be so easy. Let's make the prize light or something like that. And that seemed to come across clearly enough. And I'm like, okay, so what's she gonna do? And she's like, kind of gives him some work to do. And she's like, go do this stuff for me. And then we and we kind of leave from there. Yeah. And we kind of go to the next scene. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, and what happens next? Okay, okay. Then now we go back to Caliban. Mm-hmm. And Caliban has now met two other people who've washed up from the ship. And it's the, I guess it's the <laughs> Helen Bwim Carter <laughs> back to Master, Master of the, of the House. <laughs> so does every Shakespeare play Probably. have the There's like two characters somewhere. that are just like totally self-serving and just like, you know, the comic relief. And it's, it's, tr- it's that's Trinculo that's and Stefano. Yes! Yeah, who are you? Which are just like, I hope they were sound just re- that ridiculous in Shakespeare's time. They too. did. <laughs> like, yeah, that was the point. <laughs> it's like, who are these clowns? Just like Boob and like, and, like Jerry. <laughs> like it's just like, <laughs> like something that would sound so Jerry. ridiculous today. <laughs> like it's Boob and Jerry. Boob and Stooge. Like, I, like no, I like Boob and Jerry. That's great. <laughs> like, like I hope that's what it sounded like. It was just, it was just very obvious. And these people are played by, and then Russell Brand is Trinculo. Yes. And he comes in like he just stepped out of Get Him to the Greek and he's just <laughs> just being Russell Brand. Yeah, which I'm not mad about as me, a concept. Me neither, but it, they went, they definitely, with most of the characters, they, I feel like they took the uh, historical time period, like, dress. Russell Brand looks like that's what he wears on a Tuesday. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I feel the like same. they put stripes on his pants and they does were like, Does he still have a piercing in- too? Maybe not, I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, so that, that's Russell Brand and they're like in the desert kind of. Mm-hmm. And they go to this scene that's 
supposed to be funny. I've seen it funny before. Yeah. And they go to this scene where, uh, I'm sorry, and what's the other character's name that plays Stefano? Stefano. His name is, I know it, he was in Spider-Man 2. You're right. Alfred Molina. Doc Ock. <laughs> Doc Ock in Spider-Man 2. Doc Ock and Boob. So, I'll, yeah, we, we find um, both of them, we don't find them yet. We find just, like, uh, Stefano. And then he, like, passes out because he's drunk. And then, I think you mean Trinculo. Yeah, we just find Trinculo. Trinculo is who? Trinculo's uh, Russell Brand. Do we find? Okay, yep. Yeah, sorry, we they just they haven't found each other. They're kind of interchangeable. We, they they, they haven't found each other. Yeah. And so we 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 see um, Stefano, and Stefano passes out from being drunk, and he has like a blanket over himself, and then, and he's like groaning and stuff because he's. Wait, 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 wait. Caliban is under the blanket first. Is that what it was? So Caliban's under the blanket because he's hiding because he's scared. That's what it was. Yeah. And this is also like, God, it's so weird. Like, it, it made so much more sense when it was like played by a tiny girl in a frog suit yeah. about them being scared. Yeah. But Caliban is like this big, huge buff dude. Yeah. Is, so, is, is hiding under a blanket because he's scared of like, of like uh, and he thinks it's like it could be a spirit or because Caliban's never seen anybody either, I, I imagine. Right. So but, he thinks they're spirits. Exactly. So he thinks they're spirits. I guess. And that's a pretty good assumption because, like, Miranda and Prosper are the only humans that have showed up. In it was a long just time. really weird. So he just, like, hides under a blanket. To, to help give context for that, I think it would make more sense if the thing that happened earlier, where, where the, she's like, I'll give you cramps, like, where the threat of I'll, like, send spirits to hurt you. Mm-hmm. If that were clearer, I think it would make this fear clearer. Maybe. But it also is weird because he's like, just he looks super strong. And like, I don't know. He like it, it, I don't know. Like maybe like the fact that like the only humanoid people he knows are people who have like wizard powers, and mm-hmm. he's like maybe there's more. But he looks humanoid too. Like they right. didn't like change it. Like it doesn't seem yeah very different. I don't know. And he's clearly just like he's he's observed their behavior, and these people are just clearly behaving like they don't know what's going on. Like he knows right. it's not like so. It it, it it didn't. I didn't buy it. Yeah. And so and but because I've seen this on stage, I knew what they were getting at. Yeah. And so there's all there's like this bit that's supposed to be pure comedy. It's clearly not story building much. It's just like, okay, I'm hiding from you guys, and then now you guys come, and then I think the legs. How does it go again? Like he's fighting under the blanket, and he's so the legs Caliban's are sticking under out. the blanket, and because he's scared, and then Trinculo, yeah, Trinculo, played by Russell Brand, shows up and is like, "What's this? It's a <laughs> puppy headed monster!" And so he like he's like, uh, "Oh, it's gonna rain. I'll hide under the blanket with the with the fish." He calls. It, oh yeah, like, that's what, what it is. is. He's like, "This is a man or a fish?" And then he opens, oh, turns the blanket, and he's like playing dead. I guess he's like strange fish, and he's like, "It's just." It, it is weird. He shouldn't have taken off the blanket because that's what makes it not make sense. It's weird. And then there's like these like comedy bits where he's like, you know, when he gets under the blanket with another man, he's like, like this this circumstances gives me strange bedfellows, and he like holds his nose like I'm diving in, guys, and he goes in and like I've seen that play on stage and it's so funny. Yeah. But like it's shot super dramatically. Yeah. And it's like. Uh, it doesn't really work on camera because it's not like a stage where like all these like movements are are like working yeah, the same way. Yeah, it was weird. It was like either like way close-ups. too wide or way too close. And I there's no like music there no... or anything, so like to like help me, you know, like to like <laughs> set the set, set the stage <laughs> of like comedy. It's, I don't know, like whatever. I'm not sure what should have been changed, but like I know it's supposed to be played for comedy, and they it looks like they just went out like they had a day. And they're like, okay, we got to get all these shots. I think so too. Like and they were like, afternoon. we got Russell Brand for one day. Yeah. We got to use him. I wonder. I wonder if like if you went back and looked at like you know make them laugh like something from Singing in the Rain with like a good physical bit and how they filmed that. If yeah. you like took that as an influence. To a lot film, of stuff back then was still these. filmed like it was theater. Right. Because like there wasn't as many like the the film toolkit hadn't been like so like uh, like integrated into what we see today every day. But it's just like oh we got to. Everything's got to be big and everybody's got to see it. And yeah. this is how we show like it. It just felt like a little messy and unclear and therefore not funny. Yeah. Even though it's literally Russell Bryant brand. Yeah. Which sucks. And and he was he was giving he was, it everything. He was. And I thought he did really good with the language, too, yeah. even. Like, I, I knew that he knew what he was talking about and it didn't feel, like, foreign in his yeah. mouth or I, anything. I, and and, he, was a, and he, he was a pretty big star, like, 2010. Like, Absolutely. I, I don't think anybody, most of the cast, I don't think I needed this role. I think no. I think they all like it a lot. No, I, and I think they were all excited to work with Julie Taymor. And and I think it, so. it came across because, like, I think everybody did really good with the language. In this yeah. Like, and and uh, not that I am, you know, just some expert. No, I agree but with you. I do judge it all. And, and all, it also has been said to me and to us that like or I'm sure you knew you heard it more times than I did but mm. the fact that when it's really good you can get it just by inflection yeah and, absolutely and that has always been obvious to me like when I can't understand it like it's because of the inflection yes. I, and I could not have got and everybody with in this movie was just like they were saying it just like 
this and they were you know they were just taking their time to speak how you would as opposed to just like I gotta get through all these words and I can't mess up any of them which (laughs) I think was some of the problem sometimes with the Kenneth Branagh (laughs) Hamlet was just like we gotta get through it was just all eyebrows and wide eyes as they were saying these lines in order I'm like it's already gonna be four hours we gotta hurry (laughs) dude that oh god it would have been six hours if they did that it would have been six hours yeah Anyway. They could have made a mini series. If TV hadn't got the Sopranos hadn't come out. There yet. you go, exactly. <laughs> Had it? It was ninety six. Had it come out? I don't know. I think it was in the night. I don't know. Maybe it was nineties. Yeah, no, it was nineties. Anyway. Um, um. So then what happens? So we've got Trinculo and Stefano meet Caliban, and oh, and then Caliban, and then they give Caliban alcohol. <laughs> yeah. And Caliban like gets lit on alcohol. Is yeah. That, is, do you get lit on alcohol? Sure. I don't know. Have you drank alcohol? Am I before? cool, Paul? <laughs> 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 yeah, he's still, he, he so he, th- he thinks Stefano's a god, and he's, like, treating him like a god, and Stefano's, like, barely kind of noted. He's like, sure, I guess, like, yeah. like, 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 it's always, like, Stef- he's treating him like Stefano is Jafar, and, and Caliban's Iago. <laughs> he's just like, the, wait, like, the parrot? Yeah, he's just like, he's just oh, kind of Jafar. like, <laughs> No, that's not the. It, that's just how Jafar is treating. It's just that 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 one I way see, is yes, the yes. same. He's oh, like he's kind of annoyed Yago. by him, but he's like, sure, come on if you want. And he's Yago, just like, I don't care. And he's like, yeah, that's... sure, like kneel, kneel if you want me to do. But he's like barely like registering that he's there. Totally. Not he's that like, that's important. I, just hang out with I, my I don't know friend. what's important in this movie. <laughs> I think that I th- I don't know. I think that there should be a weird three way uh, sexual tension between the three of them at all times. For sure. Don't you think? Yeah. Especially with all of them getting under that blanket. I feel like if there's not, something's wrong. As soon as I got under the blanket, I was like, kiss! Yeah, everybody kiss! <laughs> but I think, honestly, I feel like there's, like, a jealousy there. Like, and maybe it's just, like, a bro jealousy. Like, that's my bro. Get your own bro. I think you're pushing it. I think you're forcing yeah. it. I'm, I'm curious about that. I feel like I've, I just feel like I've never seen it that way, and I think it'd be really interesting to play it that way. All right, it's like then a we check back in. I think I think since then, I think they we had show, shown that like four of the characters had like come out of the water in their review. I can't remember what yeah. happens first, but they the, they were on the ship as well, and we finally meet the last four characters, and it's like Royals, I, I, I I forget honestly I forget all their names, but like the the there's like a a, a wise old man, there's like a king mm-hmm. character, like the guy who's really in charge, uh-huh. and then there's like two kind of like helpers, like guards that are with them. Yeah, and that's. And, and and one of them is is the dad of That's the, the, the young boy. So the king is the uh-huh. dad of Ferdinand, who's the young man who's uh, got the hots for Miranda. Yeah. And and oh, they have a conversation about like, oh man, we're shipwrecked now. This sucks. Like, why are we here? And then what character? What's his name? His name is Chris Cooper. He's been in a few things. He's like the he was like the an, the antagonist in the first Jason Bourne movie. Yeah, he's been in like a it does like a lot of side characters. I didn't know he was Shakespeare. He did a great job. He did a great job. So anyway, they go they re hit on like the colonial period, and this is from the text now mm-hmm. when he's like does a he says like oh, okay well finally you it's your fault we're here mm-hmm. twofold because we we were, we were on a voyage to drop off your your daughter because we gave her to Africa. Right. And you, like, you denied her for all of she Europe. She married this dude in Africa. Yeah. Like, all these dudes like, in Europe wanted to marry her, and she wanted to go marry this African dude. Yeah. Ugh. And, and now, on our way back, we got shipwrecked, and that, now your son, and they think his son's dead because he's not with them, mm-hmm. and he, what, like, now your son's dead. So both of this, and both of your kids' deaths and the fact that we're here is all your fault. Wait, the, kid, uh, the other kid's not dead. She's just, like, in, a- in Africa. But you're, no, I'm sorry, not both your kids' death. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. like the fact that your daughter is is married to a black guy, an African. Yeah. Like, and he like says it. The like, fact it's that you have terrible. no heirs now that yeah. you can. So like, that's like the, another thing that like I was like, whoa, what? Like I didn't know. There's yeah. a lot of like colonialism, like. And I should have known that. I was, for some reason, kinda... I was like, <laughs> black and white racism is only in America. I just like, no, it's I I was like forgetting about that. I just didn't right. expect to see that totally. in this play. Yeah. Um. And so that is the case for them, and but then they're like, you know, they they're washed up, and they're like, I can't believe we're okay, cool, mm-hmm. and let's go figure Especially out what to do. Especially when you're the villain, like yeah. they're the villains, and they're like, well, your daughter is married to an African. <laughs> this is all your fault. Like we're, I, I think we're supposed to go, asshole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that makes sense, and like just yeah. to like, and and I got that, I got that enough. Like yeah. clearly, like he was not a good guy. All right, then we check back in on Miranda and the young son, mm-hmm. and he's, like, getting a bunch of wood. And, like, that's, like, his doing his... Oh, you know what? Oh, never mind. I'm, I'm thinking about something else. So he's getting a bunch of wood, and I guess that's supposed to be his, like, the, hur- the, the hurdle that, that Prospera made so they can get married. 
But so Miranda comes and sees him working, and she's like, "I can't take it anymore. I gotta talk to him. I love him so much." <laughs> she talks to him. And she's like, "Let me let me do anything for you. Let, let me help you. Let me let me. I'll let me, carry them. I'll carry them." And then she's just so thirsty. <laughs> but like so is he but he's like trying to so he's trying to finish this he's like oh, oh, oh I, I can't wait so after that and she and so they have a little conversation and yeah. she says some things that are like super like 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 tween kind of like I, I don't know it, it, it was very uncomfortable she was like uh, I'll I'll be your slave. I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> like I'll carry him too. Like I'll. Can you can you talk about that? Like maybe what she might have been like. Is there anything I'm missing there that that was really weird? I think well, she said like I'll you know I'll be your sir. Like I so basically what she said. I saying, keep like cutting off my sentences. No, I'm not no sure I understand. How to say this, yeah, but, yeah. Like, yeah. So, it was weird. So she she says to him, like she's just super lovesick over this guy. She loves him. Like you know. I guess she's known him for five minutes. Uh, yeah. No. But uh, <laughs> she um. What what she's saying is like, you know, I I gotta well I I, I don't know I I kind of like it to be honest and not for the reasons that I think you're thinking. This is the sound of me rolling my eyes. It, yeah, they can hear it. It's okay. <laughs> um, so, but the reason that I like it is like she she was raised on this island just with like a couple other people that she knows, like barely anyone at all. Like she has not been raised in a society to have like tact. You know what I mean? Like, so for her, it's like, it's not so much of like a preteen thing of like, you know, I'm an, I'm an idiot in doing this. Like, I mean, that's there too, because, you know, she doesn't, isn't as experienced. She hasn't lived in the world. Like it's, it's not that she is an idiot. It's that she has no experience, which means that A, she doesn't know that she's not supposed to say those things if she's feeling them. And B, she doesn't have any experience to go, well, maybe this person is actually an asshole and my initial attraction to them is... It must be love. Right, right. My so hormones like, are equal love because I don't know anything different. Kind of, but also, like, I, the other aspect of it that I think is the part that I like is that, you know, she she has no qualms about being like, I'm in love with you. I want to be with you. What, what, you, like, and, 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 she, and she's like, she, she has the... It's basically how me and Chloe's relationship started. It kind of is. <laughs> like, she, it, 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 <laughs> um, like, she has no, she has no qualms about being like, about just being able to be honest about those feelings. Like, you know, with, with our, you know, society, like, we're, we're not supposed to, we're not supposed to say that. Like, if, if you meet someone and you're like, oh my God, I, I think, like, I love this person. I feel that. Like, she has no doubt about that. She has no fear about that. And I, you know, I think that, I'm like... I'm Prospera in this, in this scenario. I'm I, rolling yeah. my eyes. I, I mean... You don't know what you want. <laughs> no, I mean, I think part of it is, like, you know, Prospero is that part of ourselves that, like, is world-weary, has been in society, got wronged <clears throat> by the society in a major way and got cast off. But Miranda is, like, the innocent part of ourselves that's also truthful. Like, and, and is, like like has no filter to be like like she just is she just says says it like it is and i think one thing that i always kind of wish for miranda's and like want want to see more in miranda's is just that like grounded visceral rawness because i feel like often it's like well, I love you. Like, it's, like, kind of courtly. And I, I think Felicity Jones didn't go all the way in that direction. It's like, I love you. See, I'm innocent. Everything's... It's like, no, listen, I love you, and I want to be with you, and I will carry your log. <laughs> I'll follow you Let's anywhere. Go. I'll be your slave. Tell me what to do. <laughs> but, but, no, but, like, but, no, but that's not what she's saying. She that's said not, I'll be no, your slave. No, but that's not what she's saying. You're not listening to me. Listen to me. She, I'm what, listening. I'm listening. Come down, come down. What she's I'm saying, listening. What she's saying is I want to be with you. Bottom line, if you don't want to be with me too, I'll just follow you around and be your servant because I want to be around you and make you happy. And like the the vulnerability of that is like, and like you know, it, it doesn't mean that she would actually do that for the rest of her life. But like she's in that moment, that's what she feels, so she's saying it. Like I just want to be around you. So I know you think it's stupid. I can see it in your face. <laughs> I'm sure the audience can even hear it. <laughs> Um, but it's, but I, I think, I think that's valuable. I, I don't, I'm not saying like we should all be like that all the time, but I, I am saying that I think that that perspective is valuable and, and owning that and knowing that that's part of ourselves. If we strip away, like, you know, our, our insecurities and our, our fears about getting rejected. And I, I think that seeing someone doing that as ill-advised and as stupid as it is, like there's something about that, that. Because it makes sense for her in that circumstance, 
we can connect to in, at some level because, you know, it, it's kind of like her heart is screaming and there's nothing that's filtering it, you know? Mm-hmm. So we're just hearing her heart screaming. And, like, there's something, like, really... Pure is the wrong word because it's not pure. There's something un- unfiltered about that. There's something that I think is valuable for us to just hear that straight up because in some ways that is the truth and in some ways that is part of who we are as people. I'm not sure saying that's how we should make all our decisions, but I am saying that's like, it's, it's, it's a part of us. That's a drive. And to see something like that so um, straightforwardly, I think, I think is really cool. Yeah. And uh, no, I... Th- I mean, when you put it like that. I know. <laughs> that was a hell of a speech, Chloe. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, I, I guess I have to be honest about, like, what I'm... I'm not really hating on that, the fact that she did it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what am I hating on? I may, maybe it's just, like... I don't know, the... It, Okay, I, I was going to wait till later for for this, but because I also don't know how long this conversation will be. Yeah. If, if I if I bring this up, but like, what do you think love means to Shakespeare? Like, oh like, my god, <laughs> that's such a big question. But like, it's, it's, it's like asking it's, what love means to me. It's it's like it's it's peppered all over these plays of people being like, I they're doing these things for love. Yeah. Like all these choices that I'm like, I just makes me cringe or I'm like, what? Like, why? And then like, that that's kind of the, re- that's the, you know, usually the, um, I mean, it's like, not just Shakespeare, like any play, but like, it's, I feel like, I feel so disconnected from a lot of these things and I can't tell how much of it is just like historical context or just like, you know, just things that I'm not getting in the language or, or just like a bit different sensibilities. Uh, and, so when he makes a character say, like, I love you, and, like, when, especially when they've only known each other for, like, five seconds, like, it's weird. It's, it's funny to talk to you about it, how you, like, take that at face value, and, like, that is, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> and, and it's just, I think part of that disconnect, I think, it might just be because we're different in that respect about, yeah. like, when we... Well, I think that's that's why Prospero's there, is because because, like... Like, whoa, this is untested. This is something that's just, like, a pure, in-the-moment, I love you kind of thing. It's it's not like, like, that's that's the thing about, that we were talking about Prospero being like, well, we got to test this and see if it's going to last. Like, I got to put some adversity in front of them and see if, like, that, like, holds up. Do you think, do you think that's something, like, how do you think that was received at the time? Which part? Just, like, that, that small little arc about, like, I... S- a boy, I love him. <laughs> and he's I mean, like, I think it's, like, whoa, chill. I think that it's totally similar to how it would be seen now. I think I think that kind of dynamic is something that, like, it's it's you exactly think, you as you're describing. It, you don't think it. it'd be much different? I don't think so. Interesting. No, I I think if anything, like, because Prospero is usually a father, and because a father would have more power over like who you marry and like what you do, mm-hmm. like that kind of intervention would be seen as more appropriate and as more making sense and like. But I think there would still be the same aspect of like, oh, that father thinking he can control his daughter's yeah. uh, heart. And also, I think, I mean, I, or who she I, loves. And I know, like you, I, if, that that the things that you said about you know about it being like unfiltered and like that makes sense. And I and I I think there are an element. There's like a big element of that for, especially like how my personality and too, and like the, I have a lot of filters. Mm-hmm. I think they're ultimately good, but. And the old unfilteredness is just like another way to be. I don't think that's necessarily bad, but just the fact that thank so, God, like like I'm, you're dating me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's bad at all. I think it's just another way to be. But yeah. I'm not really talking about the fact that it was unfiltered. I'm just talking. I just think that, I mean, my first. I don't. I don't, don't want to like put an overall blanket on this and saying if this ever happens, it is unhealthy. But the fact that it's an 18 year old girl who sees a boy for five minutes and saying, "I love you," and if you don't love me, I'm just gonna be your servant. I think that's unhealthy, and so it probably is. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. But with so you. It, it's like how it's being depicted is like this is beautiful, true love. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm just like, mm, I don't know. And that's my well, that's, like, that's my, my initial re jerk, like, like, like hesitance to to jump on that boat. I I get you, and I, I feel like that's why it gets tested. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah, think, he lifts logs for an hour, and he's no. <laughs> and he's well, tested. I mean, we don't know the timeline specifically. In this version, it seemed like it was an hour, but it sorry could have guys, been it was a whole four day. months. <laughs> could have been four months. Well, then that's bad storytelling. If it was four months, what do you mean? Because there's no like 
there's no time period like depiction of like how long it had been. It looked, no, there's, in, in, in there's movie, definitely none. That's what I'm saying. Bad storyteling on this movie's part. Got it's it. supposed to be four months, and that's supposed to be like I don't I don't one, know what it's one, supposed to be. One, yeah. he, he's like barely sweating, and he does it for like a day, and she helps him. She does half well, of it. Well, I love that she does half of it because <laughs> she's gonna be. So, <laughs> I don't love, given the circumstances, I don't love that she does have Why? Them. Because, like, if I say, like, I love you, and then, or you say you love me, and but then your dad was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he was like, he's got to, like, lift some bricks first to test it, and then you lift half of them. <laughs> I feel like that's a great analogy. No, no, but then that, like, that, then I'm not having to do the work. I'm not actually being tested. I'm being half tested. No, you're, I'm being tested, too. Oh, well, then your dad plays a deep game. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But but I, I feel like that's a great analogy because it's like you know I feel like like even if even if we're even if Dad's not playing a deep game right so like like hey boy who is dating my daughter perfect is that a good dad impression it's perfect that's exactly is that your what dad. all dads sound like oh my dad specifically yeah it sounds just like my dad my dad totally dad's the sweetest hey dad yeah he's really great we love we love my dad we love my dad in this house. Um, so, like, if he's like, hey, you, like, go carry these logs so you can date my daughter. If I'm the daughter, I'm going to be like, oh, my God, my dad sucks. Like, this is stupid. So, and, and so I'm going to help. Like, I'm going to, especially if I've been, like, living on an island for my whole life. I'm probably strong and capable, <laughs> more so than a teeny little prince. So, like, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, the table almost fell over. And I was just like, <laughs> who's <laughs> <laughs> Whose fault was it mine? Um, but <laughs> but I, I got excited. Um, so like I, I feel like it's a great it's a great analogy because it's like you know if it, it's kind of the the princess who's rescuing herself too because it's like you know it's it's like if the guy goes to slay the dragon to go be with the princess and the princess is like hey hey it toss me a sword and then like she's got a sword and she's like I'll get his butt you get his head and then they kill the dragon together like and I I feel like that's then a good analogy going forward in the relationship of like we're going to solve problems together and we're going to get through adversity together and if there's something that you have to fight, we'll fight it together sometimes. Mm, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I, you're, I, you're right, but I don't see it. I'm, I'm, I'm not done with that. Anyway, so... Fuck, we're we're worried. So okay. So, so we're talking about that scene. Yeah, we're, to, yeah. Yeah, we're talking about. I'm just mean like I'm just trying to. Hopefully, it's like coherent. It's probably never. It's coherent. Be coherent. Yeah. But anyway, so we, don't uh, second we, guess yourself. We, so yeah, we meet the we meet the dad of the prince, and we meet his advisor and his two bodyguards, and then we go back to them, and he's now he's working to prove himself for yeah. to Prospero for Miranda's love. Yeah. And then, uh, we go back to. I think we go back to Caliban, but like, God, every t- I always don't want to mention the Caliban B story because they never run into anybody else, mm-hmm. and they nothing they do matters. Yeah. So I'm just like, why do I even like? I keep trying to remember, like, okay, then we're back to Caliban, and they go do other stuff, but I just like, what? They don't even talk about anything. They just keep treating them like shit, and at the end, they meet back up with everybody, and he realizes they're not gods, and then he just leaves. <laughs> like, yeah, I see that. That's the part that I'm like. Well, you could have done something more with that. Yeah. You're gonna have that whole buildup about colonialism. We could have actually had. Yeah, it had never went anywhere. So like, that. I feel like it's just more confusion just for me to add it. So mm-hmm. I'm just gonna say that, and then we'll just come back to them at the end. Yeah. Okay. So now the king, and so now we're we're we fought. That, that's basically all that happens too with with the son and uh, with Miranda. Like they're just they're, that's happening until at the end when they're like. We're in love now. Like yeah. the, everything is re- so. Really, a lot of the rest of the story, at least for arc purposes, are it has to do with the the king, the advisor, and the two, um, and the two guards, and now uh, Ariel, who's just fucking with them the rest of the movie. Yeah. And so now they're they're walking and they're like, okay, you know, we got to find out what's happening. And then Ariel comes up and he like <laughs> blows in the king and the advisor's ear, and they both fall asleep. Uh huh. But the 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 guards are awake and they're like the fuck just happened? Because nobody sees Ariel because Ariel is invisible. Can I, can I give a little context about who these people are? Yeah. Th- those two people. So the people that are still awake are, one of them is the brother of Prospero. Well, I, was, I was getting there. And one of them is the brother of the king. Yeah. Yeah. So just to give that context, that's all yeah. I wanted to say. Yeah, so exactly. Well, that, so I was going to stop there and like, you know, break that down a little bit. So Do it! <laughs> so... Uh, Ariel is kind of on orders from Prospero, but yeah, no. specifically... Ariel is, yeah. Yeah. And so he's, but I don't know why specifically he's like making just two of them fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so we reveal now that uh, Chris Cooper is Prospera Helen Murin's brother, brother, and he was the one who got her exiled, and he, he's the one who killed her husband, right? 
Did he kill I, her? I don't know. They don't specify that, but but did get her exiled, yes. I think they did say he killed her husband. He was like... Did they? Yeah. That's so funny. And he's like... Because it's not part of the original plot, so it's like... I'm but not, I think I'm that was sure. why he was telling... Uh, oh, my God. What are these actors' names? That's why he was telling Alan Cumming, who was the, the king's brother. Yeah, I love Alan and So he's, he's, like, he's like, look, I killed my... Oh, no, he's... He got her exiled. He didn't kill. I don't, yeah. I don't know what the fuck he did. Yeah. But basically, he betrayed. Right. There was a betrayal that um, already happened. Prospera, and he got her exiled. He's like, I've got and a resume like, of betrayal. He's like, so the, the, once the king's dead, now they're vulnerable, and there's nobody on this deserted island to, like, you know, there's no witnesses. So yeah. he's like, look, man, I betrayed my sister. Look at me now. Look at me now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a king's bodyguard. Look how well I, my clothes are. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm a yeah. king's guard. <laughs> and then he's like, now you need to. And the hand to the king. He's like, now. If we kill these guys while they're sleeping, then for some reason that will mean great things for us. Because one of them is the king. Yeah, because one of them is the king. And what? And the, the other is the king's BFF. Oh, the other the one's the king. So yeah, the king's brother is this other person. So he was like, then you'll get the kingship and you'll yeah you'll inherit the throne. Yeah. If we ever get out of this Alan island. Alan Cumming is the king's brother. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, uh, he's like, well, well, what about our conscience? And he's like, screw conscience. Like you know, yeah. con- what did like. I didn't need, I don't, I threw away my conscience and I'm fine. Yeah. So he's like, all right, cool. And they're, and so they're about to like do it. They're about to like draw their swords and they draw their swords. And then this, uh, Ariel wakes them back up. Yeah. And Ariel, and then they're like, why are you guys drawn? He's like, oh, I've heard a noise. I don't know. We were good. <laughs> it was, it was, and then they're like, it was, it was boars or, or bears. <laughs> And then no, like, bulls. They say bulls. It was like, it was a bunch of bulls. Or maybe it was bears. I don't know. And so they're and like kind of suspicious. Those things sound the same, yeah. And it is kind of bumbling. And like the other production we had seen, it, like, it, it was played kind of light for comedy. And yeah. I thought that worked pretty well. I did too. I think it should have been funny. But yeah, but the movie, the way every every single thing shot, even when it was supposed to be comedy, it was shot kind of dramatically. And it was like, yeah. it was, and like even the music tone and like how the like, colors are. I feel like they were trying to find like a unifying cinem- cinema cinematographical thing, like uh, the way it was filmed. They were trying to like unify that, but I don't think they need the to. The story is all over the place. Because the story is back and forth. It's between comedy and, and drama. For sure. Yeah. And so, and then now Ariel is. Ariel's kind of just basically causing mischief. It's just like kind of like Lokiing all over the place. Totally. And, uh,. And like, okay, cool. I guess there was boars. Maybe we were sleeping. I don't know. We're suspicious of you, but we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Yeah. And they keep going, and then they go and they find like a big thing of fruit. Yeah. And there's a big like, table full of food. It, which which I imagine they're like super happy to find because they probably look are hungry on this deserted island. Yeah. And they're like, oh, this is now the we... same four guys too. Exactly. Yeah. And this is so bonkers, man. And so they so they grab the fruit. Which I guess is forbidden fruit, which maybe is symbolic. I don't know. Yeah. And then now Ariel comes back. Okay, we have to describe what Ariel looks like now. Yeah. So Ariel, who's <laughs> supposed to be a fright, a sprite, or just like a little like entity, is played by is played by Ben Wishaw, and he has been in a lot of things. I am a huge fan of him from Cloud Atlas, where he yes. was the amanuensis, and he was like the the lover of uh, Mr. Frobisher. No, something like that. Yeah. Six Smith. <laughs> so, but anyway, so he is just like all in like white ash, God of War ash body body paint, and but naked. he's naked, totally naked. Yeah. And but so, the only scene that we have like full frontal of him, it's like you, was you that, but you don't see his dick. It's uh, weird. I don't know, Which, I don't know if it's like tough. Chloe cut? really wanted to see his dick. I, I don't did know why. not. <laughs> She was like, "Where's the dick?" It was confusing, <laughs> though. I was like, movie. "I was like, what's happening?" <laughs> no, it was only that one well, shot. I, mean, like, I was that, like, "That's I was fair." Like, I, I get happening? what they were trying to do. Like that, that that's a fair enough depiction of that. But it was just. It, he was never on set, it looked like. It was just a bunch of green screen actions that he did. Yeah. And they just painted him in the scenes and they had like all these like, like kind of ghosting. Kind of transparent. Yeah. And they had all these like ghosting things happening, and it was just, I think. They didn't really have a plan for how they were going to do it. They're like, we'll just do it all on green screen afterwards, and they just like pasted him in, and it was really awkward. I like, I have a feeling. That, so this is my grand theory for for this is that they they were like, okay, we know we're going to do Ariel as CG, but maybe Julie Taymor didn't have a lot of experience working with uh, computer generated aspects, so they didn't have. They it's hard to plan for. Right, you have to really plan for this stuff to make it look good, as we've learned a lot from uh, Corridor Crew, yeah. uh, VFX artists React, which is really fun if you want to check that out. Um, but we, th- so so basically, what we've learned is like you have to have some sort of coordinator on set to help advise you in terms of like what what do your camera movements need to be or like how can you account for them 
like when you go back later and yeah. and you know it it, it it doesn't necessarily have to be a these, budgeting problem yeah because you can do that for fairly fairly cheap because right. it's, it's 2010 but it's planning it's yeah. about planning so like I mean it came out in 2010 it could be like 2005 but and like so, it's not like it was like 91 right. and they wasn't really sure how to do it and so what what I'm anticipating is like that they they did it and assumed that later they could just put them in in the holes in the scene that they had and it just it didn't really yeah. work some some scenes they planned it better like the scene where it was just him and Prospera right and she was like uh, circling him yeah it's a simpler scene to film mm-hmm. but like some of the other ones there I think they didn't really quite have a vision for it and they just had to paste it in after it was looking really I, weird I think so too and I, I think I if I'm totally honest I think that's where the movie suffered the most is because so you, you have Helen Mirren who's an amazing actress and if I really like think about it in my mind and try to isolate her performance I think she did a really great job. I think everybody did a good job. Me too, but I I think that her in, like trying to interact with Ariel who wasn't really there with her. Yeah. And so they it, it seemed like they didn't clearly have an idea of where Ariel was going to be, so she just had to guess. <laughs> and she did a great job guessing like she was she was clear about where she thought Ariel was, but it wasn't always quite in the same spot as she was looking at. Yeah. You know, or so it, so it didn't really feel like they were connected, and that relationship is like yeah, her mean, most important relationship. Directors now, like even even though the technology is per- and the in the in the strategies and have progressed so much till now. Directors still shy away because they're like, I don't want to take away from my character's performance. Right, I, exactly. I want them to be like, you know, even like the Irishman. He was like, Yeah, I'm glad about all this technology to like make them look younger. Yeah. But they like definitely went with the infrared route because they were like, I don't want them to wear a bunch of mocap dots while they're acting because exactly. I want them to be able to act, exactly. which is like a smart choice. It like, is. Like you can be the biggest professional, but like you want to get stuff out of the way. Yeah. So anyway, this isn't like a film podcast, but <laughs> it was just something that was like but really I, I sticking think it's out true. to us. I think it's important in terms of like what we're thinking about if we're making these into films. And I think, you know, for the past yeah. couple, we've been looking at films. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah, for the adaptation aspect of it. Especially with Tempest. There, if you're making a film... Especially with Temptress? <laughs> especially with Temptress. Um, there, there probably are going to be some CG elements if you're doing the Tempest yeah. in, on film. So like you, you, that's something you should definitely think about. I think, for sure. When you're going into Anyway, it. so I wanted to just describe what Ariel looked like so when they grab the fruit, <laughs> Ariel bursts out of nowhere again. But, but <laughs> instead of the white body paint, he is in like all black, shiny, like body paint. In, but, but like it's like black and like oil. It's almost like he's like of. covered in tar. And he has like now big bird's wings. He looks most, I imagine he's supposed to look like a big naked crow. Yeah. And, he, and he's like, you know scaring the crap out of them and just like flapping his wings all over and has this big monologue in Shakespearean poetry. And? And they gave him these boobs, these big black bird boobs. Yeah. <laughs> and I was very curious about that choice. I didn't even notice the boobs until Paul <laughs> We had to rewind it. We had to rewind it to look at the boobs. I was like, he didn't have boobs. <laughs> and Paul was like, yeah. He's like, like, I mean, they're they're kind of small boobs but they're boobs <laughs> they're there and I was like you're right like they're they're clearly rounded and which was, they're not in the other things and it's such the, a specific choice that I'm like is there something in the text that like says I, like and then a big <laughs> breast black breasted bird <laughs> boob man that that's not in the text <laughs> but but people always talk about Ariel and spirits in general as being kind of um, what's asexual the word of like, yeah a, or, hermaphroditic did it yeah, just kind or of just like a gender. A gender. Yeah, yeah, just or, or gender fluid maybe. Like kind of <laughs> There was a word there for us. I don't know why we didn't I just think use it. All of those Not binary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could have just totally. said it. Right. And uh like, you know, just kind of fluidly moving through gender and like that's not as much of a thing for them because they're not as physical. Um so it makes sense in terms of like like the idea of them doing that and like making Ariel go back and forth kind of between genders, but like the execution, I find strange. I don't know. Sometimes like I can't like not watch that because what like think about that kind of stuff because like I can't just like accept it and like that. Honestly, that's a fair enough analysis just to be like, oh, they're like non-binary, so like they do that. Yeah. And and if that's the case, they didn't really like shine a light on them. They didn't do like a, just a close up on boobs. So, Maybe like, that's why they didn't. He, he didn't have a penis. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like they mm-hmm. didn't. They didn't do a close up on boobs or anything. It right. was just I caught it and you missed it, so it wasn't yeah. that pronounced. So like honestly, if that's the case, that's a nice Maybe it was subtle, a subtle touch. Thing. And like and I probably didn't deserve any scrutiny, but like all I could think was just like. Somebody had to stop and change that on the costume to make them look like this. Right. That's something that you spend a lot of time on, and it made me wonder why so that choice was made. It's a very conscious choice. So in right. my mind, it like stuck out like 
Why? So I wonder then, too, like, but, and it makes sense that, like, this is Ariel's only costume change for the fact that, like, now Ariel's being scary Ariel and then goes back to normal Ariel. Scary Ariel scary is Ariel. <laughs> scary Ariel. <laughs> but, right, but that's the other aspect of it, too. It's like, oh, scary Ariel is female, which is like, okay. And then, and then why wasn't there more fluidity with, uh, with this, his, her, whatever, whatever spirit gender before? Like, why is it all just, like, a very masculine naked form and then, like, feminine and evil bird. Like, there are only two things. Like, why isn't, like, why isn't it then so being when fluid you're mad, the whole time? you're an evil bird. <laughs> you, now you just sound like the guys on It's Always Sunny yeah. in Philadelphia <laughs> talking to D. You don't want to be those guys, Paul. Those That's guys, so funny. Those guys are bad. <laughs> oh, man. It is just so ridiculous. It's funny to me. Yeah. Um, Anyway, I you know what's really funny? I know that we're getting through the show and that we're getting towards the end because I remember when we would get to the feast scene in the in the young adult like Prospero storm, I'd be like, "Okay, cool, we're almost at the end." <laughs> Cuz I had like this weird break in the middle and I'd it, be like And it's not quite building to anything to me. Like things are just kind of happening. I know, but that's because <laughs> the whole ending got cut. <laughs> My favorite speech got cut. All right. Well, we'll get it to, I guess we'll get a chance to get to that. Ugh. So let's 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 finish it up. Yeah, so, let's finish it up. So that <laughs> that happens and like they, and it's, they, it's and not they, just my favorite speech, it's the conclusion. Okay, sorry, I'm, and, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> the conclusion of the whole cut I believe. And they and they <laughs> it's not just an afterthought. And they get scared, and I'm trying to remember like like, this is the part where it gets really weird for me because, like, things don't... Th- in the movie, things don't seem to happen because the last thing happened. Things just happen after the ne- last thing happened. It just... Mm-hmm. Thing, this happened next. And yeah. I, and, I, and it, like, it's really, like, a mind fuck for me because I can't... It doesn't connect in my brain the way most things do. Like, I don't remember a lot of facts. I remember a lot of why, and then I can remember one thing and everything just cascades from there. So yeah. when, it, when it is disjointed like that, it immediately falls apart for, like, yeah. how I understand things. Uh, do you, a weird question. Do you feel like that with Midsummer Night's Dream, or has it been too long I've, since you've seen that? that you I've remember? never seen it. Okay, never mind. But yeah, I feel like that with everything. That's how I. That's how I learn things. Okay, never mind. I, we can get into that later. I'm. I'm just wondering if it's like, if it's actually about the fact that they were cutting back and forth between different things, because like movies Not do that all the time. Cutting back and forth and telling two stories at once, but like it wasn't clear that this next thing happened because the last thing happened. Like, like that happened and the bird thing happened and they got scared. And then they just like went. They just kept traveling after that. They never. They never had a battle. They never got hurt. I mean, they they, they, rele- they revealed that it was an illusion. I guess. They did. Oh, man, it, I guess it wasn't clear. They they didn't really keep traveling after that. They then kind of got caught in oh. that weird spell. No, no, you're right. You're right. I think that was just my fault then. No, I think you're good. that was just my fault that I didn't like connect them. I was trying to. I was trying. There's a lot to, going on in this. I was too. trying to figure out like a why certain things were happening. Nothing, and I was just spending so much energy thinking about that that I was just kind of like clocking the story as it went and yeah. I don't know it just it was just difficult for me to to take in you're right I forgot I forgot that that they reveal after that that it wasn't like a an actual thing it was an illusion uh-huh. and then they have like a little co- short conversation with the king and the old advisor who are you know kind of like the two subgroup of the four that are like that the nice group the nice group and then he was like yeah and then they see in the background that the the two guards that were plotting to kill the king or, like, still swinging at the illusion while the other two guys have come out of it. And they're like, yeah, you know, I guess if, if you're not an asshole, then you come out of illusions earlier. And they basically say that. Because <laughs> they're still swinging at nothing. And um, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, and then it just immediately, there, it's almost like Shakespeare was writing it. He's like, oh, crap, i got to wrap this up. And so, and so now there's, like, this whatever force, is, uh, like, like, but it, ultimately it's Ariel who's like, okay, now i got to bring everybody to... To I mean, Prospero, Prospero kind of initiates that, and so I understand why you're thinking like Shakespeare was like, oh, I gotta wrap this up. But literally, it's Prospero, and I think Prospero says something along the lines of like, "Who's written by Shakespeare?" But like, <laughs> but but it makes sense for the character too. It's like, okay, this is all turning into madness. We gotta wrap this up. Yeah, because Prospero Shakespeare was like, "Hey, this is turning into madness. No! We gotta wrap this up." <laughs> okay, fine, whatever. And so, and and honestly, the movie seemed to do this too because like the movie didn't like it wasn't like a progressive like journey. I don't know how I would have done it better, but, like, they were just, like, doing this, and then the next thing, and then they're, like, another random place in the woods, and then they, <laughs> and then, and then suddenly the, it's depicted by, again, this, this uh, green screen ghosting effect of Ariel just, like, jumping across the screen as, like, the characters are just running across a wide shot to get to the next thing. Yeah. And then suddenly everybody is at the end now, and, uh, and they get caught in this circle, and, like, like a, a circle drawn in the sand, or it's, like, Lit on fire by Helen Mirren by now they have a budget for CG effects, and so and so they get they, and then they all go into the circle and they like freeze 
in, in place, and then because Prospera has like which was really cool. We were talking about this, yeah. How like okay, this is back to like a film critique, yeah, not, this, not a story it, critique. But but it's it's also like a it's a positive thing because what what happens is like they just freeze and clearly they're just standing there frozen because their hair is moving, yeah, which also I thought was a cool touch yeah. because it's like they're being interacted with by the world around them. It's just they're, that they're, they're frozen stuck. under their own power in in our real life. Exactly, and so. Prospero has this speech where she's going around and kind of talking to them, and then part of the speech is her letting them out of the spell. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it's literally just them standing there and her walking around, and we follow her through this like windy, long shot as she's talking to them. And it was so nice because it was just her performance. It was just that. We didn't have to worry about any other CG elements that weren't quite hitting. And it really it was nice. And I yeah. just... It, it made me want for more practical effects in this. Yeah. I mean, I, I I don't understand, like, many movies do that where, like, they're supposed to be, like, a ghost character, but, like, and the, they're literally on set and they're just talking into the, at the person. But also, it was, like, it, I think that works because, because yeah. then, like, it, it makes you feel like this ghost is real and tangible. Yeah. Which is scary. Or, it is scary. Or, or is, like, if nothing else, like, yeah, like, real. Like, yeah. And but they, I don't think he, the person who played Ariel, was like ever on set. They just, <laughs> just I, I feel like they never brought Ariel to whatever island they were filming yeah. at. I feel like they, they, maybe they didn't even hire him until after <laughs> production wrapped. That's hilarious. <sighs> so anyway, but Her- Helen Mirren is like you know talking to them and like as they're frozen and like you know revealing who she is because they had never seen her till this point. Mm-hmm. And then also you know like confronting her brother is like yeah you the, here I am motherfucker like you <laughs> you you banished me and like but now look look at me now I got mm-hmm. all this power. I could do whatever I want to you. And then did you catch what she said to the two assholes? Uh, can you remind me? I probably will remember. Uh, it, so it was basically what she was saying to them was, I could tell what you two have been up to, but I won't at this time. Do you remember that part? No. So so at one point she goes up to the two assholes that were plotting to kill the king and Angelo, the old man, um, and she's like, and you two, I could... Tell some tales about what you two have been up to today, but I'm not going to say anything at this time. Like, basically, just like... That's interesting. I know. Also makes me think she's not a good person. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, because if, if you were... I mean, if you, you want to talk about ethics and talk yeah. about ethical philosophy... Hell yeah. I mean, like, what... I don't know what which one she subscribes to, but clearly... The king not knowing that his brother is plotting to kill him puts him in a, a general mortal danger as long as his brother is alive or as long as he doesn't it remains ignorant of his brother's motivations. Well, does it? it? It was a very specific set of circumstances that they were in on the island, including that okay, so, the well, two of them were vulnerable. I mean... Like, no one will ever know because you were on the island. So, okay, I guess, assuming that the brother is not... Uh, is not handed a set of circumstances in the future where he has a chance to kill the king and not and get away with it, which I feel like is very possible. But I feel like also if a really powerful wizard said to you, I know what you were going to do and we're thinking about doing or we're trying to do, like, I feel like Giving then, him a second chance? Yeah, like, she's giving him a second chance and also, like, now, like, dad knows what we were trying to do so now I we mean I, I, so cops, sure so I guess you it. can read those intentions into it but again I think it's another clarity problem like yeah whispering it into his ear right before you let them all go I feel like does it feel like maniacal it didn't feel specifically like do good I'm giving you a second chance to do good I, it felt okay, like okay so can we, we can, I think we can get to my theory now my overarching theory well wait, wait do we want to just finish the finish the play yeah, real quick I, totally yeah. hold that thought we're almost there <laughs> Okay, because it is wrapping up very fast. I know. And then it cuts to another fucking nonsense scene of now, as as well as those those guys, like the king and all of them coming back, fuck, we come back to... Caliban. Ca- Caliban, uh, Trinculo, and Stefano, yeah. who are just... Doc Ock. Yeah, who, do, who like, I don't know what they've been doing, man, but they're just like wandering around. And, they, and, and the, the way the movie depicts this is that they come into clearly what is... Uh, Stefano's house, that, yeah. that, that set piece. And they go find like a clothesline full of hanging women's clothing. And they're like, and they like, they're acting like they just found gold. And they're just like, oh my God, this is amazing. And they're taking it off and they're smelling it and they're just like rubbing it all over their faces. And then randomly, a bunch of like CG hell dogs pop out of nowhere and start chasing them to the most ridiculous music and editing. Like this, this is the scene that they 
they were at the end of the day, and, and, and Russell Brand had to catch a flight, a flight in three hours, <laughs> and they were just like, "All right, guys, just run around this set. We'll just put the camera right here, and then we'll just like have you running away." Mm-hmm. And like, it. I'm sorry. Like, I know it's hard to make a movie, but like, this is what happened, and it was painfully clear. And uh, and it, <laughs> Russell Brand's got to catch a flight. <laughs> like, I think that's what I'm gonna say every time we run out of time and I have to do something. Oh on man, it, on and, and like let it like God, let me know. I love Julie. I will love. Not, I almost say Julie Andrews. <laughs> I meant I meant Ju- Julie Taymor. Yeah. Forever for across the universe. Yeah. But like, no, I don't. I don't know what was the circumstances, but like they just like running I'm sure around. They were nuts. And I wasn't clear. And then later you told me like what. What they were supposed to have actually been found, what, what they're supposed to have found, yeah. and, and hell dogs aren't in the play. <laughs> I mean, like kind of, but not like that. <laughs> so anyway, they like run away, and they're like, you know, they're scared, and like the dogs. They are really, chasing them. they looked like Pokemon. They looked kind of like, uh, like you know, when you had Pokemon Go, and you could put the Pokemon in the world. It looked like you uh, took like Growlithe and put him, put him in the basically. World. And then so anyway, they they end up back where everybody was, and then. Um, you know. Wait, but can I can I talk about the what what's supposed to happen in that scene? Sure. So they're supposed to be going into Prospero's house. So like this is the entrance to Prospero's house. So they're supposed to be going in there because uh, Caliban's like, if you get Prospero's book, then you can learn all the spells and like have all the power, and then you can take over the island and kill Prospero. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the idea of like what they're what they've been doing this whole time, what they're trying to get to, blah blah blah. And I think they cut the scene where they're conspiring about that. But yeah, anyway, I think so too. I think so. I never remember seeing that. Yeah, I know. I, I think that should be in the beginning of when they meet. I think it is. Is it? I think so. I missed it. It's either that or like another scene that happens soon after that. But Damn. um, I know. But they uh, so they're they're on their way to get this book, but they run into the clothing that's been set up by Prospero because Prospero knows this is gonna happen because Prospero is like the person that knows all on the island because of all the power that he she holds. Mm-hmm. Um, so they they're going to get this book. Uh, the clothing's in the way. So the the idea of the clothing is like the clothing is of a higher stature than what they usually have. Because they're servants, so like they see it and they're like, oh, "This could be ours," and like we 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 are gonna have the status and we're gonna be in charge. But like they don't know how to wear the clothing, so like he has ends up with a sleeve on his head, which like I think is a good bit. It just wasn't developed well, and everything around it was bad, so like it didn't really land. But like they don't know how to wear this. They they don't really know what's women's clothing and what's men's clothing. They just know that if they wear it, they have more status. Yeah, I can already tell how that would be hilarious. Right, and like. Yeah, but but totally. also, like you were saying, Russell Brand is wearing really nice clothing already, so that's not really His clear. His clothing is super wonky, yeah. yeah it's like he's so, wearing, like, pajamas that were made, like, now. Right, exactly. So it's like, the, but they already look shiny and bright and colorful, which is the same as the clothing on the line looks. So it's like, what what's the difference? Yeah. Um, and then, like, and then because Prospero knew they were coming the whole time, the, you know, the spirits get released to go attack them. So that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that, I, I can... Again, every time this always happens. Like when you say it, I'm like, "Oh, that makes sense." But or would have, or yeah. whatever, yeah. So they get chased, and they end up, you know, meeting up with everybody now. So we're all collaborating again at the end, and the, the, the and the da- the king now sees the sun, and he's like, "You're alive, great!" And the sun's like, "Look, my new wife," and he's like, "Cool." And then and and, and also uh, Prospera also has like this heart melting moment where she's like, "I'm setting all you guys free." I'm like doing, you know, I, you know, uh, Ariel, you're free, uh, you know, and she also tells Ariel, it's like release the spell on on Cal on uh, Caliban and uh, Trinculo and Stefano because uh-huh. apparently now they're still running away and they're being chased by bees like in the movie, you know. and he's like release the spell and also like you know my daughter go love love this boy and like everybody yeah. I just want everybody to be happy now I have like and that, I remember that from the other productions that I've seen like you know there's like this like a moment of just like like love and like you know like your the Grinch's heart grew three times that day mm-hmm. cool um and then and we and we meet Stefano and Stefano and Trunculo Trunculo, Trunculo uh-huh. Jesus Christ uh they come back to the king and he's like you know, oh, there you idiots are. Like, go back to the boat. And then Caliban's like, you're not a god? What? And is like, so pissed off. And then, like, and so now uh, Jaimon Hansu walks up the stairs and he's, like, walking away and he turns around and him and, and uh, Prospera have this, like, intense stare down. And she's like, what? And he's like, 
I hate you. <laughs> like, and they're but saying, they don't say that. And they're saying this with their eyes, and he's in the super close up, and just walks away. So like, everybody gets a happy ending except for Caliban. Yeah. <laughs> except for, I guess in this movie, black people. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what that's supposed to say or what it's supposed to mean, but it's just kind of over. And then how, is that what's the last scene? How does it end? Um, they all just have like a happy. It kind of like so. Then she breaks her staff and throws it in the ocean. Oh yeah, I remember that. And yeah, so and I, that's clearly symbolic. Like Matt, yeah. I'm done with magic. Right, I, but the thing is, Paul. The thing is, <laughs> there's supposed to be a whole speech about it, and they had like maybe a line and a half from that speech, and then the rest of it was lyrics for the credit song. Oh. And then I saw that Oof. come across the screen, and I was like, I should have said that in the movie, and the movie's over, and now they're saying it? Why? It's so funny. This one's, like, half as long as the as Hamlet movie was that we watched, but, like, I feel like it's so sporadic, and it's, like, very difficult. Like, if I had to sum it up, I'd have a hard time. Like, I know we went through the deep I agree, the and deep I summary, know this story well. But, like, I would imagine there's, like, I can, there can be, like, a two-sentence, like, you know, concise summary of, like, oh, this movie's about this, and this, and this. And for most Shakespeare plays, I'm, I'm like, I don't know if I could do that. Like, and, and so, no, most Shakespeare plays that I've seen productions of them, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I could do that. And so for this one, I, I can't, I'm not sure what it's about. I can't say it's about, you know, love, I can't, forgiveness. I mean, there's elements of, like, certain things in there, but, I mean, none of them I feel like come across clearly. I think, if I'm to think about this play overarchingly, like, not just... Or, like, one of them, ab- like, much above the others. Yeah. I, I would say, if, if I were to talk about what this play is about overall, to me, I would say it's about forgiveness is the bottom line. It's mm-hmm. about uh, forgiveness uh, versus the control that we want to have in not forgiving. Mm-hmm. Like, those two things pitted against each other. Yeah, and there's a lot of elements of, like, of like servitude and, like, classism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I was going to say, just under that is, like, like they're, society they're, they're, versus, like, wildness, basically. That, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. like, uh, especially because, like, there is, uh, you know, there's the servitude of Caliban uh, to, to Prospera as well as Ariel to Prospera. There's also, like, there's, like, Stefano and... Trinculo, who were servants, but mm-hmm. now had their time they alone, and mobility. this is what they would do. Yeah. But apparently, they would just drink and be assholes. <laughs> so like, right, and, and I think that so that's... poor people are that's just drunk this, idiots. <laughs> no, I mean, not... I, I feel like that's not what the message of it, though, is. Like, what I, is it? No, I, I feel like... I'm, 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 I feel like like I'm being too no, no, like, no, mean you, about it. I'm no, not really not, trying to do good, that. You're good, you're good. I just feel like there's a multitude of things that it talks about, and, like, shows all these different people in these different circumstances and what they would do, and, like... In this situation, like, Prospero, uh, like, ends up with no power because she got put on this island, but then builds up power through magic, like, to make herself strong so she can never get betrayed again and lose all her power. Mm-hmm. Um, but ends up, like, being a controlling asshole. And, like, controlling everyone on the island, like, in a way that she would have been a terrible ruler if she were like that in Milan and is a terrible ruler on this island. That's so funny. Like, I, the, I, I feel like there's such, like... Oh my God! I feel like you have this beautiful gold chain because like every time you explain it really well, and like these themes are like very universal, and mm-hmm. it makes so much sense. But I feel like we have the, like, this beautiful gold chain that you want to wear, but it's tied and needs all these knots. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a, a really good adaptation would be untangling these knots. Yeah, so you or have, just a good production. So, you, so you'd have this same gold chain. But now it's actually wearable and doesn't look ridiculous tied up in all these knots. Dude, that's why I made that goddamn web series. Because, <laughs> um, like, that, that, yeah. that, that makes sense. And when you say it, I guess I could see it through that lens. But I feel like I have to do too much work and I don't know enough for it. Like, I can't enjoy it just on the first view. Like, we have to talk about it for three hours. Right. And then, like, watch a bunch of productions for me to be like, oh, okay, I think I do get this story. Yeah. And, like, the thing, like, the thing I was talking about with Miranda, too, of, like, if we're talking about society versus wildness, too, is, like, you know, she would have been... In a society that would have taught her to be like, oh, I, hello, I won't s- share my feelings. I, oh yet. my god! I, you know what I want to say? Like, I, I especially about her like character design or yeah. her like costume design. I thought this from the beginning, and uh-huh. like, it's just making me feel like more and more about this. But she is like a beautiful woman, yes. and she is like in this fairly clean white dress, yeah. and and a fairly kempt hair. I thought she should have looked feral. Me too. I thought she That's what I always looked, want Miranda to look she, like. She should have. Like, she's she a mess. Looked dirty. Yeah. She should have looked. Yeah, exactly. And then by the end of the play, like maybe like they have like a not necessarily like they make her up or anything like that, but like maybe there is like a slight 
visual transformation. But like, if you grew up on an island and again, don't know this like decorum no. of like, like sure, you can tell me that about why, and, I'm, and maybe you can tell me I should see through that as for why she said I love you without any pretense because she doesn't know have any of the filters that we learn no, in society. No, I'm but, with you. But visually, she should look that feral. should be reinforced. I don't even think she should look different by the end. I think she should just be like. Like, I don't know, maybe Ferdinand chops off her hair so it's not tangled knots or, like, you know, something sure, to, yeah. like, help her logistically. But I love I, I that mean, she's like, well. She, should, she, shouldn't ma- she shouldn't intentionally, like, be made to look ugly or anything. But, no. I mean, like, she should look like you live on an island. Yes. She doesn't have access to the things, you know, the... the, the... But, but also, but, like... But, she, sh- but it also doesn't matter for her. It doesn't matter. What? Like, you know, look, like, she doesn't live in a society, so what society does she have to look like? Yeah, she should have hairy armpits. She yeah, like, like, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and that would also make it more believable for yes. me for the prince yes. to love her, too. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. That's it. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, yes. I got it. You did it. And like, um, you know, and the other thing, too, I keep thinking about is, like, it's like, am I, am I just, like, am, is it that Paul's, like, getting it, or am I just bringing him to my side of how I see Shakespeare? Like, is this, like... like, like I, I, all I, it's just, just like indoctrinating it's, it's, it's him like, into it's my like, cult, it's like, it's my it's personal like, It's like the hoax of horses doing math. It's like they're not actually like counting. Like they say, a lot of times they just read the cues of the humans getting excited, and once they reach the peak excitement, they stop. So like, I'm just reading your cues. Like, no, 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 I hate love, hate love, love. I love, I love him. I love him. <laughs> no, but it's so funny that you said that about her being feral. Because I, I want to, I want to play I, Miranda, I, and I want to be a feral freaking Miranda. I immediately thought that oh. when, when, I, when, they, when it was like, oh, you've been here all your life. I'm like, then why does she look like that? Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's so funny. That's exactly it. Yeah, and I feel like people are always like, oh, Miranda. I bet, you know, I and bet I've, you that was a producer choice, too. I'm like, oh, she's, yeah. our, she's our female lead? No, Absolutely. she's got to be this she's person. Look she's got to look pretty like Pretty and flowy, and exactly. like she's part of the island and the nature. Like, no, she's part of the island. I'm like, what's... Wh- Listen. On, honestly, I couldn't really tell if she was wearing makeup or not, because I think she probably... I think I don't think Maybe she, needs, like she doesn't need some to. Maybe, like, some corrective, but, yeah, not a lot. But, um... But yeah, so like we're talking about wildness versus society. So like you know, I love that the wildness of Miranda implies that she can just say whatever the fuck she wants to the guy that she just met. Yeah, I love like or like you know the wildness of the situation with the the king and the followers becomes that like his darker side comes out. Like you know, it's like he's like we're in this wild situation. Anything could happen. We might as well just kill him. It's like Lord of the Flies. You know. Yeah. Um. So you have all these okay. different people reacting to this this situation in such different ways and um and it brings out the best and worst in different people and like what is what does that say about us as people in general what does it say about us as humans i think it's a little more sloppy than that i mean well it's i not mean like, do you mean the player do you mean the production Ooh, good point um i i don't know because i haven't read the play but but uh like some a lot of it again there's not like enough not that it should have been longer, but, like, I think you could distill a lot of these. Yeah, I would have really liked to have, like, an emotional connection to... I think Prospera is probably the most, I guess, like, complicated, round character mm-hmm. in this. That I could see something. Everybody else just seemed like they were getting pushed in these directions that I couldn't quite follow. And part of it is because they're getting pushed by Prospero. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and that's... and I, I don't know, I get... I, I'm also, like, admittedly not the best at, like, picking up on these things. Like, I am, like, a, a lot of times I, I'm one of those people who, like, look at reviews and, like, you know, breakdowns of movies afterwards and I'm like, oh, that's what they were trying to say, even, like, new movies. So, yeah, maybe some of those things make, are clear to a lot of people, but not me, but... I'm not saying that. I know you're not, but I'm just, like, I'm, I'm, I'm marking that as a possibility. But, uh, yeah, like, I, that would have been so, like, if, if I would have caught on to that that theme about like Prospero Prospero was like didn't want to be you know got controlled and betrayed but now is like now doing the same thing which is very exactly. human right uh, and then like realizes it at the end you mm-hmm. know and then like has time to you know write some of those wrongs it's like a beautiful story it's very cathartic it's like it's something that I think is a, uh, a trope for a reason it's really good but yeah. I missed a lot of that yeah I think so too and I think uh, and I, I, I this is part of my overarching theory I think that a big reason that we miss that and we miss that both that development of of Prospero's character and that we missed uh, how everything's connected because Prospero's giving orders to Ariel to make all this stuff happen yeah. to further the plot is because Ariel was such a weird thing that we didn't like looking at. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we, we were just paying attention to, like, 
is like whoa, 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 whoa. the CG so you're saying, is weird. You're saying the character. Oh, we 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 got hung up on that and forgot what the character is supposed to be doing. Yes. No, I mean, I I, I mean, I I look at the just like what um, I keep, usually have like one step remove of like okay, this happened and because this happened, like it's my mind the way I think about it. Yeah. But, like, a lot of times, like, why? Why did you make them fall asleep? And why is, like, but that... But what I'm saying is, like, I think it would have been clearer if we just didn't have to worry about that CG aspect. Because I think that kind of... Like, it just made that relationship with Ariel kind of impossible to have. Like, the the relationship between the two of them, I emotionally... Mean, I, I was, thought it was funny, but I didn't think I, like... It, it didn't, like, stop me from, like, being able to... Invest in them? No, I, a, it's not... As a friendship? No, I mean, I also, I thought he did a good job, too. Me, the, too. The he did. He was like, great. He, he was... It just, it just, for me, it felt like it was hard for them to connect, which made it hard for a, a potential audience to understand. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe it added a certain little bit of a Both the relationship and barrier. what they're trying to do together, yeah. Yeah. Um, but not really. I don't think my problem was, was that specifically. Like, I, I, I think as a, I, 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 those two things are two, in two different lanes in my mind. That's so like, funny. To me, they're, like, right on top of each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's fair. It, do you feel like those two s- separate things were problems though? Like, do you feel like, do you feel like the relationship between, really, like, what do you think made made you feel like, oh, these things aren't connected? Oh, well, part part of it was the language because if we get to like, like I can see, you know, like, again, like I can get certain things with tone, like how this the this per- this person's relationship dynamic or, or, you know, just like how this person is supposed to be seen in other people's eyes. But if someone's like, go do this thing and then do this thing and then, but make sure you do this, I might miss some of that. And then I might, it might be unclear to me why they're doing this specific direction that was given by Prospero. But like, well, I don't... that's not a language thing then. That's just like too many things going on at once. Maybe. Yeah. Or, but, but also I, cause I have to listen really closely to one scene, but I might be like still trying to break down the last scene and like trying to like catch up. And then I, because like. You know, the, the I, I can't pa- as passively take in Shakespearean language as I can normal today English. I may have missed it, so I don't know if I missed that line. But I don't. I, it was unclear why why he was just messing with them unless like like what is what was in, in making those like two little things happen, like them fall asleep and then you know then waking them up so they don't actually get killed. Like what d- did did Prospera ever specifically tell Ariel to do something or she was just like, okay, just go fuck with those guys until I'm until I'm ready for him. Or did she was she like, go reveal the true hearts of of the king's brother by putting him in a situation. Like did she say that? The second one, and I, I to be honest, I can't remember if that was cut or if that was in there, but Prospero definitely tells Ariel exactly what to do. Okay. I, that may have happened. I probably just didn't quite understand. I don't even what know if happening. it happened, to be honest. So. <laughs> okay, so, exactly. so, so then that's what we're talking about. Like that's, and that might be a, something that, as a director, you leave in, but it's just it's just a lot of exposition, and some people might miss it. And like, I, that, so I don't necessarily blame the production for that. If 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 it was said, if it was left in there, huh? Or, or how would you do it? Like, if it, do you still blame the production for that if I missed it? Maybe because I I don't know. Like it, I, I'm I gotta be honest. It still to me feels like the problem is in the CG aerial because it it just feels like we're looking at this dude that's flitting around. We're realizing he's on a green screen, so we're thinking about that. We're like, our brains are trying to reconcile that that's happening while Maybe. we're trying to get all this <laughs> exposition about like or not even exposition, but while we're trying to figure out like. Is Prospero telling Ariel exactly what to do? Is the reason Ariel is doing this stuff because of Prospero and what Prospero is saying? Is Ariel rebelling against what Prospero is saying? I can't tell what's happening with Ariel. Yeah. Like, because I can't tell what their relationship is. Because they're not in the same room. Or, like, you know, they could have not been in the same room. But the, the bridge wasn't gapped in terms of, like, what... The gap wasn't bridged. The gap wasn't bridged. <laughs> I did the thing you do. I know. The gap, the gap wasn't bridged in terms of making that connection happen. I didn't feel yeah. like they were in the same room. Yeah, I, and, and the, I feel like this happens... This happened... I'm not sure. The... It's just that writing device of Ariel. She's like, go tell Ariel to do something, and Ariel can just do whatever. It can just do anything. It mm-hmm. can just, like... And she's like, go do these things to these characters, and Ariel's like, not like, who's who now? Who's the brother? Like, who are... Like, they all just look like men to me. Like, there's not, there's not a, like, a really distinction. She's just like... And so... There's no time That does happen on, in Midsummer. Yeah. <laughs> do you just know like, that? Just go, no, I don't know that. Yeah. Like, just go, hey, go do this to this this character, this character, and this character. And like, all right, I'll do whatever you want. And they just start like, 
Like, how does Ariel... Well, Ariel doesn't just always I'm, I'm do that. I'm not really critiquing the movie for this. I'm just kind of, You're like, just kind of messing around, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, like, but Ariel is, like, oh, I don't, I don't want to, like, I'm... You keep yeah, telling just set me free already, me. God! Yeah. yeah. Well, understandably. Yeah. Um, okay, so I have a, curi- a few questions about, like, the, again, like, the historical context for this, like... A, in Shakespeare's time, there would have been, you know, an Ariel character. How mm-hmm. do you think the costume would have looked for that? I don't know. I think... And especially the black bird part of it. That's I'm a like, great question. I, I know because of the fact that, and we were talking about this, in the text, they're like, look at my feathers or but something. You, but you also, play, like, say that a lot of times, like, the reason why certain things are because, like, the, you know, there's no mics. There's, like, tons of crowd and people are like, getting popcorn. So they got to re, re-say exposition a lot. Yeah. And, like, that makes sense. Like, it's very... Um, informal. So I'm like, are they spinning a lot of, like, is it look like a huge, well-produced, like... This is like, what we were going to talk about and, yesterday. Because yeah, that yeah. would make a big difference between, like, hey, and, like, there's a person just run, run out on stage and say, I'm a ghost now, governor! And they just, like... I mean, and, that is a little bit of what happens. people remember that they're a ghost? Or does, they, does it say ghost on their shirt? <laughs> on their tunic? Like in a middle school on, production? On, on their frock, does it just say ghost? <laughs> and so, like, people can remember, oh, that's the ghost. That's the ghost! I can, even if I was watching yeah, a production of a play set in these times, and something is like happening, like I would still need some help. Yeah. Uh, to remember all these things. Totally. So like. Um. So one there's of the a things, ship, you know, like one of the things, and this is actually really interesting. Can I put on my little Shakespeare nerd hat for a second? So. Sure. I, do can it. I think? <laughs> um, can I? Um. So the in 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 this time, one of the things that they would do would be to get donations from like lords and ladies of their old like, dresses or their old, you know, tunics, um, if, especially if they were trying to play characters that were, like, higher in station than them. And that was part of the reason that a lot of people were, like, suspicious of actors and didn't like actors because they could, you know, transform into someone that wasn't of their social class and it freaked people out. And they were like, I, I don't like this. Like, this isn't what we're supposed to be able to do. Like, you are your social class. That's a part of who you are. Or, like, mm-hmm. you are a man. You're born as that. You right. cannot change. No, no, no. And people, um, people did it too convincingly and it would be like, oh, fuck. Be like, oh, God, you're yeah. just like the queen. Are you the queen? Oh, no, I can't think that. That's the queen, you know, yeah. so... So, um, so I do know that I do know that a lot of their costumes were like they uh, were like donated from lords and ladies and That's things like funny. that, which I think is cool. Like yeah. especially if they just had like, a specific and, and, and something that was maybe like royalty or a high class was just like something that was was, was uh, like died purpose, well. purposefully sewn and had no holes in uh-huh. it. Like, oh, you rich? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> like or like dyed a certain color even. I yeah, di- yeah. For, I know dyes a, was a, a hard thing to be able to do. Totally. To have purpose over what color you wore. Yeah. Um, and Is that why purple's all royalty? Because purple's a hard, a hard color dye. to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's funny. You did it. You figured it out. I'm so smart. You're so smart, Paul. Um, but yeah. It, so they they would have that. So I, I I can't speak to specifically like I, I'm not sure off the top of my head, and I'd be curious to see if if anyone would know based on scholarly research, research, um, what uh like what they would have worn specifically to be a spirit. I'm imagining something with like you know, flowiness to it, but but that's just like you know, what in my head. like I, I, like a, a a feather boa. I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah. Okay, another thing. Okay, so now, can we get into systems of magic real quick? Yeah. All right. I could talk about that all day with you about anything. I I don't want to, like, get into, like, my philosophy on what magic systems should be in stories. <laughs> because, but I do think there is a, a, a certain grounded in reality aspect that makes it more fun for the magic. So I can know what the stakes are. Like, like what... Like, if you want to step, take one step beyond what magic is, it's like what we understand about physics makes stories... Uh, it lets us know the stakes of stories without people having to say anything. Like, we know that there's gravity, and we know if right. you jump off a tall building, you'll die. So right. when somebody's walking on a ledge, we We're know you don't, you don't have to say anything else. It is. So, like, if we know what magic is, and we see, or, like, even, like, the forest and, like, Yoda and stuff, like, we, we know that it's difficult to lift, you know, small things, and it's even more difficult to lift heavy things. So right. when somebody lifts something heavy, like, if it's been established what the baseline is for what people can do with this thing. Totally. Like, it, it doesn't need to be a specific system. There just needs to be a system. I mean, I don't... I, I'm, I'm Again, I'm, I'm hesitant to say there always needs to be one because, yeah. like, Harry Potter got away with a lot of stuff, I think, without really establishing a system. Right, right. So, like, maybe some consistency. I don't really know what it is, but, like, it just... When there is not something that ties it to something I can understand, it... It, it bothers me. It might bother me more than it bothers other people because there's plenty of stories that don't really do a system and are still very popular. But 
that's my philosophy and that's how I you know take in stories so it's relevant here because there's yeah, a lot of magic. I think it helps at the very least. So so what my question would be again uh, like I, I'm, I'm trying to like leave room for things that I may not understand and so like is there like a historical context for like the creature that Ariel is supposed to be or like what maybe like about what a wizard can or can't do or like a, what a witch can or can't do that that helps that for the for the things that weren't talked about it in Shakespeare, like maybe the, maybe at at the time it didn't need to be talked about. Right, I'm I try, think trying to like leave room for that. Totally, I think that the only the only historical context that I know off the top of my head specifically, um, and you know, I could I could look some more stuff up about this, but the things that I know are like like dark arts, witches equals bad, and then like fairies and fae and like spirits equals. Like, actually, spirits is more neutral, but, like, fairies and fae equals good. So, like, it, it's interesting to... So if to, there's nothing else, we're supposed to know that Ariel is, a good, is like, on the good side. I don't know, because they don't say, like, fairy for Ariel. They say spirit, which to me feels more neutral. And just for the things that I know off the top of my head, Got again, it. I'm not totally sure about that. And if, if I were cool, to... Well, you don't have a PhD in, like, historical, <laughs> like, magic system. I'm so sorry. <laughs> One day I will. Actually, that would be a really interesting PhD to get. But, um... Yeah, about historical spirit. The I don't history think it's, of it's, magic it's, it's probably It's probably an anthropo- anthropological degree. But it's interesting to think about it in the context of, like, religion. Because religion was a very powerful thing at For this sure. time. And so, like, how would it's that have fit up. into that religion? Like, would it be, like, anti-religion? Like, I think it's interesting that that they reference in this version with a female Prospera, that it's like, uh, people that are women and have quote-unquote done magic have gotten burned for that. Yeah. So, like, that's part of the reason I was expelled. That was a good and line, that is thought, why yeah. that is why Prospero is expelled even in the other version, is it's like, oh, like, Prospero was too distracted with learning magic to actually rule in the other version is, is oh. what their whole thing was. Um, which was, like, the propaganda against him, whether it's true or not. I don't know. Interesting. Um, yeah, but so... so Either way, we. But here's a couple things that I know that we know from this play about how magic works in this world of the play. Hit me. So one of the things is that the book is really important. So Prospero's book, you know, whether it's the research that she she he or a book of spells has done. Yeah, exactly. It's or the a book source of, spells. of the power. Yes, exactly. Um, but it's it's a big source of power. And then we have the staff as well. So the staff is something that when it gets See, broken Gandalf? at the end, I kind of. I mean, I was thinking about. I was Helen, thinking about that like too. Helen like Mirren, Gandalf I think, is friends with. Uh, with Ian McKellen, <laughs> so I think it's hilarious that he got you them. to take his staff. Like, I wonder if Ian, if she like called Ian, was like, Ian, like, how do I wield a staff in the best way? And he's like, hilarious. listen, here's what you do. <laughs> um, but but the staff is really important when it breaks at the end, uh, and and then she dra- quote unquote drowns her book, like throws it into the bottom of the ocean. She loses her power. She can't use magic anymore. Like it's not like the power the magic magic is not inherently in her. Yeah, it's a it's skill. inherently in apparently. Ariel being a spirit. It's inherently in in the, in an object apparently. Right, exactly, but not. In I, her. But and I would accept even if it was like something that she could do. But maybe like again. So I don't know if anybody ever knows what the Dresden Files is. Like like magical objects. Like so again, they, and they create a magic system in that story mm-hmm. where magic is just energy. It's mm-hmm. just it's like it's it's sci- it, You could even describe it as science that we just don't know yet because. Yeah. You know that whole the uh, adage that like uh, science uh, uh, sufficiently advanced is indistinguishable from magic, right. which is which is cool. It's and, like, true. and it's like and, and they make it like an art form. Or so and so like you could focus energy and make much more potent. Uh, you know, uh, consequences to the things you do. And than I feel it, like then too- if you then if you just like you know made this huge, you know, ball of fire. You could have, like, a laser pointed. And, like, th- right. those are two different applications of the same amount of energy. Right. And if, uh, I, if I'm thinking about, too, like, w- whether the magic is inherent in the staff or not, what it seems like is the staff is, like, a channeler of that's magic. What's gonna, that's and exactly energy. what I was going to say. That's so funny, So, yeah. like, the, the, in that reality, like, they help focus energy. And even if it wasn't, like, I, 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 like, again, I'm getting too into the weeds on, like, magic systems. No, but, I, but, please, get, this is all I want. Is <laughs> let's nerd out about the magic system but, of the Tempest. But I would have accepted it just as a storytelling map that she broke it for symbol symbolism which is which would have been great yeah like, broke it because i'm done with this yeah fair enough or uh, even just because then she can't channel it anymore yeah so I, yeah. I all i'm saying is that like throughout the movie like the or the story like that magic magic was being used left and right but i had no like gauge on if it's important that it's and maybe i shouldn't have been like like worried about the system but for me it helps me kind of like gauge why this is like how it how it's affected in the world like I, I I guess again I don't like remember all these facts I don't know like they all cascade and like they feel like they should fit together for me for like for me to like buy this world and yeah. when it doesn't it's really hard for me to 
to one take for granted what just happened, but also like build on that for the next scene and the next scene. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I think that for that reason, it's important to have like a, a system or at least like in, in your mind if you're the or person like some consistency. It. Yeah, I think that's what Harry Potter did really well. It's like it's it was consistent. Mm-hmm. Students weren't as good as the teachers, and they never really like like, you know, lean too hard on, like, what happened. They were usually, like, clever or he got saved by somebody or, yeah. like, or Hermione was just, like, the most organized the and the best one and she had well, a clever solution. Well, do you solution. relate to Hermione? <laughs> Probably. Maybe a little. <laughs> or, like, he had, like, a much better solution that we could all get uh, get on board with. Like, yeah. oh, you had done this preparation. Yeah. And so, therefore, that's why it's good. So, like, totally. it, it, that has nothing to do with really magic, but, like, it's, it's, it is all the same it thing. It does, though, yeah. We just need to, like, we need to understand why this person can do what they do. I think if I were to describe Prospero, like, in the way that Prospero uses magic, like, Prospero is trying to hoard magic for herself because she is, you know, keeping Ariel as a servant so that, like, Ariel has to help her. And, like, that's a lot of magic stored up in one, like, you know, not human being, but in one spirit. Like, she's got the staff. She's got the book. She's, like, not really letting... Miranda in on the magic stuff that's happening because she's just putting Miranda to sleep whenever she needs to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know, I forgot about that. Right. Which is so kind of fucked up. It dude, really is. For a parent and you're just like, like, Mommy, you want to tell me about the birds and the bees? Go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Like that, that ultimate Why kind of power. Why am I here? Why are we on this island? Go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's exactly it. Um, yeah, and... What are uh, boys? Like, go to sleep. <laughs> right. And, and, like, controlling Caliban even to have, like, Caliban, like, get them their firewood, get them, like, everything. Like, and, and I think that we Which is talking... funny because Caliban was carrying firewood in the beginning and then when she had the dude do the work, yes. he did the firewood. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. She's like... Firewood, firewood. You're I, all getting firewood. Like I need you to do something, but for the purpose of so you to make sure you love my daughter. Now get this firewood because I just fired my last guy. <laughs> my last guy just quit. My last guy just quit. He he got he got drunk with with some with Russell Brand. I, I really yeah I really hate that caliber. I mean I don't hate that, but like I guess the movie was trying to do that. But like back to like the the racial yeah. Like, let's line. let's please like, go back to that because I think it's related to what we were just talking about. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. It's so mm-hmm, uncomfortable that mm-hmm. Caliban was just like. Okay, I'm quitting you, master. Like I, I don't like you. I'm leaving because you know you stole this li- island, yeah. this land from my from my forefathers, basically yeah. from my mother, which again, which is very you know what happened to Africans. Yes. And then also like as soon as he leaves, he's looking for a new master, which is disgusting. He and then he finds it in Stefano. He's like, finally a new master. Like like my only place in life is to be a servant. And he's just so brainwashed by that concept. Right, which that is fucking sucks. so uncomfortable. It makes my skin crawl. Yeah. Right? To watch any scene with Caliban in this movie is quite uncomfortable. One thing that I think... No, that doesn't help. <laughs> but I was going to say one thing that, like, at least leads him down some sort of path to getting away from that is, like, the, the whole thing is he wants to get the book so they can kill Prospero. Yeah, and, and, and I wish that... And one, that would have been... <sighs> Yeah, I, I, it, it seemed like he was just so excited to be, have a master and be told what mm. to do. And that seemed to be his driving motivation throughout the entire movie, which was uncomfortable. But if he would have left and he would have been, like, maybe trying to use these guys that he... Maybe he thought they were spirits and he thought that they could kill him, so he was, like, he calling them master. But if his driving motivation was clearly just to get revenge on, right. pr- on Prospero... Through what, whatever means necessary. That would have been so much more interesting. Yeah. And that would have been such a... But, like, they just used him as this zany, like, three-some character group that just was just there for laughs. Yeah. And also didn't really do it that well in the movie. Mm-hmm. So much funnier on stage. Mm-hmm. So, like... He just like <laughs> double failed, I think. Right. At like getting this I point agree. across. And like and that on that front, at least for that part of this movie, I do feel comfortable saying that like it just it wasn't a good execution. It wasn't execution. clicking. It wasn't I know it's difficult to make a movie, but like that, that wasn't a very it, good execution. I agree. I don't think it was good execution either. And I, I also think that like, you know, if we're gonna have that that thing of like, well, Prospero has all this power, but then gets redeemed by the end. Prospero is not redeemed in Caliban's eyes even slightly. Like no. re, pro, like clearly Prospero still wants to have the power over Caliban at the end in that last exchange. Change, even yeah. though they didn't say anything, yeah, and or, 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 or something. If, if not power over, just maybe there's no no desire no to like make it right. No, exactly. no. and it, like, what, what good was that whole heart melting moment right. of like you know like get, letting setting everybody free? If uh, about how about like hey, I'm leaving the island, Caliban, you can have your island back. I'm right. sorry, totally, <laughs> nothing. Right, no, nothing, nothing, and like that's even something that you, especially if you have CG, you could do like non verbally. If you wanted to. I, yeah. I can't even smile, remember. Smile, maybe? Like, yeah, no, maybe right. They just stared just each other down. Just a smile would be and nice. Then, and then he walked away just right. so sad and angry. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> this is really dark. Yeah. But, like, not, and it's not that I don't like dark. It's just, like, why? 
Why, right. why do you start that whole thing if you're not going to finish it or make it go anywhere? No, I agree. I like think that 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 dynamic had no arc. It just was at the beginning and it was at the end. I totally agree. I I think that I, like you can't set something like that up. You can't set up like a violence against someone, especially one that we recognize yeah, and that cuts deep. <laughs> it really does. And and not not resolve it and not like either have the care either you can't so there, there are two possibilities here right one is that at the end of the play we realized prospero was an asshole all along which isn't what happens in this play no. or at the end of the play prospero realized that the, that the prospero has been being an asshole and fixes prospero's ways i, I mean in some ways it kind of happens yeah and, yeah and that doesn't mean prospero is redeemed but like at least prospero like the tries to complete. make up for being an asshole and the arc is complete right so like Neither of those things really happened. Like, <laughs> no. like they they maybe kind of tried for the second one, and it didn't work at all. Like they, it, it was not even a smile. Like you said, not yeah. even a smile. All so, right, so, yeah. so we we spent a lot of time like shitting on this uh, this production. We're, we're not really shitting on it, but like oh. you know, try to, try picking it apart and trying yeah. to like see where the the, the holes were. Mm-hmm. So let's try to turn this key a little bit yeah. and open this door. Like, what are some of the things that did either I missed in the in the movie or like? Were were cut out, yeah. or or, or we just could have done better to like to complete the story, especially because you think this is a really good play. Yeah, um, can I hit one thing that I really liked about this movie yeah. real quick before we move on to that? I really like. Please, please do. Please, that. let's do that. Because I, love I, you, again, there was a lot of good things about yeah. this. Yeah, and, and, there were, and, and, and it, especially it, good moments too. And one of the things that makes filmmaking so hard is that it only takes one to fail. Yeah. One element to fail yes. to like and make it all me, come crashing down, or to make like to CG. make viewers like us be like, "There was bullshit." <laughs> no, totally, totally. Yeah. I, I think that wh- one of the th- the first thing, that, and I think the most important is, I love the performances. I thought everybody did a really good job. Yeah. There wasn't a weak link. Yeah, I've um, I, I've yeah. seen a lot of Shakespeare as an outsider, especially after meeting you, and it. I can tell when like someone is just saying the lines. Yeah. And everybody knew exactly what they were trying to do, yeah. and, and they were they and were doing it as well as they could. Good for Felicity Jones. I thought Felicity Jones was maybe my favorite, and I'd really? never seen her do Shakespeare before. I thought she did a really good job. I, I don't agree with her with her or the production's interpretation of Miranda in terms of her not being feral as heck, mm-hmm. but. I, I thought she That's did a good my job. favorite thing that we've agreed on. I know, me too. I, yeah. Okay, we gotta we gotta make that happen. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I, honestly, let's uh, go back room. Uh, D- Daijun Hansu was my favorite. Like, yeah. I, I think yeah. I think I imagine he was this, amazing, especially for like the way that they wanted uh, he to play better. him. He deserved a better. I, I think I, I was like, wow. I mean, he's like making some choices, and he's sticking to him, and he's like, he mm-hmm. does really good with that like kind of feral kind. He of, went for it. Yeah, that, yeah. that depiction, and, and he, it made me believe what he was trying to do. I really liked that moment that he had where he set down the firewood, and he was mad about yeah. the firewood and all that. Like, I really felt for him, and I really was with him in that moment, for you know? Sure. And, that, I, and I thought I just thought I loved the way he delivered that language. It was just freaking beautiful. Um, the other thing I really liked was the very across the universe moment we were talking about at the end. Oh uh, yeah, Ferdinand was singing to Miranda. I was like, this is this is where Julie <laughs> Taymor. to be across the universe. This is where Julie Taymor and Tempest meet. I was like, this this is this is where it's clicking. Like I feel like when she sat down and was like, I want to do the Tempest. That's what she thought of was that moment. And and there, to there was me, a few I was like, in the movie, we're like, like this is what like this, they, is this where it tra- trailer shot. This yeah. is in the, like this yeah. is what they were like. Oh, finally we have a budget. We can make magic real. Right. We can make this fire that come out fire of nowhere. Circle. That was great. I love the fire. They, I bet you they were thinking about those moment, mo- yeah. moments and they forgot about the rest I of the movie. I think so too. Yeah, and I, I think that like and, and Julie Taymor is great with like uh spectacle, and I think that she knows how to use it really well in some ways. It just didn't quite work with the with the aerial stuff, which made a lot of dominoes fall in a bad way. I bet way. you budget and time was a huge I think limit. so too. I'm sure that the time that they had to do the CG was probably a problem too. Yeah. Um but but I really liked that moment. I thought that like it was just so honest and vulnerable. It made me wish there was even more music throughout the whole movie, which I think they could have done um without too much problem. Um I I really liked that moment. I yeah, I thought, um, I yeah, I think the thing that I was missing most, oh, and we, we never actually specifically talked about it, was that monologue at the end. The monologue that yes. that I'm obsessed with. So, so like, again, so, uh, again, we're trying to turn this key, we're trying to, like, yeah, get, what, what are the parts that, like, about the movie that either I missed or, like, could have been done better or, like, like shined a bigger light upon right. to... to to get it closer to bridge the gap yeah, I think between this, is the, the this main production thing. And, the, and like what the play should be. What the be. play should be. I think this is the biggest thing, to be honest. So th- this monologue is a monologue that not only... So not only Prospero is... So we, we have the moment where she breaks her staff and drowns her book. But th- this monologue is about her doing that and about why she's doing that and about like what what that means. And, and not only... Is, in that monologue is she, so this is the ma- last monologue of the play this is the last thing that happens 
So she's like, I'm taking off the magic, the magic is done. So like, she's taking off one layer of control. And then, and then, what? she also <laughs> is taking off the fourth wall of the play. And she oh. goes, I'm just an actor on a stage. Like basically, not quite directly, but she goes, like, now my charms are all overthrown, what strength I have is my own, which is very Prospero, like, that's just that. But then, at the end of the play, she's like, if if you, like, if you can lend me one last piece of magic, basically, like, can you give me your hands, um, oh my god, I'm crying just thinking about it, and I'm just paraphrasing it, but, like, can, can you give me your hands to help me on my journey? Can you uh, give me your, your, your breath, basically, to be the wind in my sails, to carry me forward? to help me uh, in this next chapter of my life as I'm leaving this island and going back to um, my life. And and the other aspect of that that is also partially why I'm feeling emotional about this is this play was written towards the end of Shakespeare's career. And so part of this was like his farewell to being a playwright and to the theater. And so it's it's him saying like, I've had all of this power and I haven't always used it well, and now I am abjuring this power. Yeah, that's a huge amount of context that could be super hard, hard hitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You okay? No. no. <laughs> um, dude, when when I saw Larry Ando do that monologue, I was like, I want to be you when I grow up. Like that's the moment I was like, that sounds like, I was like this so is what beautiful. I want. Yeah, I, I, I it's wish, incredible. I wish it like it came across. I wish I had the tools to have it come across more. Again, I'm not going to read the play. <laughs> like, I mean, like, go go read the monologue if you if you're interested. It's it's really good. Um, I could also see like, w- like it's, reading, it's not hard to digest either. It's re- pretty reading, straightforward. Reading a text. I mean, I might, but now at this point, now that we're doing this podcast, I almost like don't want to because like I feel right. like this yeah. makes for interesting conversation yeah, of like sure. seeing where it could. But like I, I yeah, I mean, I've read a lot of books, so like reading a book, there's like it, there's no awkwardness for p- people saying things. They're, they don't have to have the right inflection. Yeah, it comes across as these words are put together. Yes, and it's like a a beautiful part of that medium, and you can read it as slow or as fast as you need to to get it, or as many times. Yeah, and uh, I imagine. That's the the hard part about that translation from text to play. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's really cool. I think we, I think we got I think we found out a, a, a lot of different things about like what works and what doesn't. Why? And I I found about a lot found out a lot about this play that I didn't know before. Yeah. We agreed on a few things. Yeah. Didn't oh. agree on some other ones. Oh, totally. <laughs> Feral Miranda. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Whether Miranda's being an idiot, we'll figure it out later. <laughs> But uh, until then, and until the next episode, I'm Paul Stafford. And I'm Chloe Baldwin, and this has been Shakes Hero. Thanks for listening. And we hope the gap just got a little bit smaller. Okay, bye. (laughs) When you talk to me in language, and my profit hunters, I know how to curse. Thanks for listening to Shakes Hero. You can check out our website and email us your suggestions at shakeshero.com, or you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at the handle Shakes Hero. We're on Spotify and Apple Music, so please review, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next episode.